Uh, nope, didn't work. GG. Well, that sucks. But, not terrible. Just not going to be able to see your guys' lovely comments for this show. Hopefully they fix it. Can Twitch do anything right? Probably not. Rest in peace. What an awful company. As we go on to the next match of the evening. Oh, first we're going to get a little update here. Seems like Kendall Wolf has somehow received a status effect. That upwards arrow, which I'm pretty sure grants him a couple of plus ones in a few categories. And Ryan Colt suffering a downwards effect. Ooh, I just spit everywhere. That's gross. Ew. Ooh, that transition screen is loud. Oh my goodness. All right, here we go. Up next, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be finding out who's going to Purgatory to take on X-Gen's Ryan Kent and Quantum to crown our inaugural Tornado Tag Team Champions. Both these duos here showing some tenacity in their first round matches. Last week we saw the Briggs family, Buzzsaw Jack, the uh, new enforcer for Big Duke there, taking down extreme conditions in foreign affairs with one of the quickest actual matches in CMV history, defeating the Republic in maybe a minute and a half. I'm not too sure. I have to go back and watch it uh, to get the exact time, but it's all about this. Who wants it more? Tornado Tag Team Anarchy Rules, of course. All four men legal at the same time. First team to gain pinfall or submission will walk out with the victory <clears throat> and the possibility for gold and to make history this Sunday. Of course, the uh, title match itself at Burger will be Elimination. Tornado Tag Team Elimination, much like our match tonight will be for the tor uh, World Tag Team title, I should say. Not Tornado, standard elimination as T and Lee try to become three-time champs, prove that absolution was just a fluke. Fast and Furious trying to prove that T and Lee's time in the sun is indeed done. God, I hate that I can't see the chat. That really sucks. What kind of glitch is that even? Come on, Twitch. Come on. Come on, Twitch. Come on, Twitch. Don't even know if I'm actually live this time. This says I have zero viewers. Gonna have to do this old trick again, Tim. If I am live, please send me a message. Tim. Not everybody. Oh, I am live. Never mind, Tim. Don't send the message. Don't send the message, Tim. Says I have 10 people now. It's just taking a while. Tim! Don't send the message! Love this theme song. Big Duke Briggs. Might be pulling double duty this Sunday because, of course, we know he already has a scheduled match against Elijah Stewart. Last man standing, it will be. Uh, I'm betting Duke Briggs is hoping that the title match will come before the last man standing match. I don't know about going into a championship bout after getting through a last man standing match. We have to incapacitate your opponent. Can't respond to the count of 10. Elijah Stewart seeking retribution for his fallen brother. DJ Moore, who he believes was viciously assaulted by this man. And fair point, because this past month, Duke Briggs and Andrew Briggs, the two brothers, and Buzzsaw Jack have two times now brutally beat down Elijah Stewart as Stewart was just trying to talk to them, trying to get some information, trying to make them confess to the crime. So if Duke Briggs didn't do the attack, he's certainly not being a, a nice guy about it. Bud saw Jack, one of CMB's newest signings. Duke saw something in the kid, brought him up, and Jack certainly didn't disappoint in his fusion debut. These two, though, <clears throat> man, <laughs> if you didn't see that, that Genesis match last week, these two defeating the Republic, I would go back and watch it. Absolute burial. Mike Mazel, former Intercontinental Champion, Never able to grab the tag team belts with, I think he's had four partners in his entire CMB career now. Now we know that Chris Andrews, after winning a fatal four-way on last week's Genesis, will be meeting Morgan Jackson for the international title at Purgatory. What would it mean for all of 
Foreign Affairs to not only have title matches at the pay-per-view, but also all walkout champions. We're going to find out right now if that is to be the Briggs family, two huge towering men, Foreign Affairs, the madman and the, the octopus. And look at that. My goodness. Oliver Kane right out of the gate with a big boot to the chest of Duke. Didn't take him down, and Buzz saw Jack catching him from behind with a nice suplex there. No disqualifications, of course. Anything goes. No count outs either. We didn't see a whole lot of extreme uh, in the Genesis match for Foreign Affairs last week. Because, again, it ended in like a minute. But certainly between extreme conditions and the Briggs family and last week's fusion, it was very, very back and forth. But in the end... Briggs family actually pinning both members, both Matt Jefferson and Eric Thunder at the same time. Didn't even need to do that. It's not elimination. Just to pin one guy. They just wanted to prove their strength, though. Oh, as foreign affairs member Oliver Kane is just sent tumbling down to the outside. The Royal Rumble has come and passed. I can't say, you know, shades of the Royal Rumble anymore. Duke Briggs. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the very muscular, downright brawler, Mike Miles. Many people forget his reign as Intercontinental Champion. Held the belt for, I think, a month and a half. It's not too long. Multi-time contender for the Inter Intercontinental title after he lost, of course, the Intercontinental Championships, formerly what the uh, International title was. Well, it was the Intercontinental title, then it was the United States title, now it's the International title. As we get that big time front slam from Duke. Might be looking to snatch himself up a weapon now. Buzz saw Jack from behind. Going to target Oliver Kane here who's paler than a ghost. Oh, I thought he counted for a second. No, it's that fall from grace. Shout out to duo Maxwell who we'll see in action tonight. Alongside his tag team partner Bison taking on the debuting duo of the League of Dudes. Table from Duke here. Not a table match, thank God. They have, I don't think they even have a tag team tables match this year. Probably be an addition to next year's game. 2K17. Glitching out hard in the corner here. They're all congregating. The game can't handle it. Lift up power bomb from Buzzsaw Jack. That's been all Duke family thus far. I'm sure Chris Andrews is watching in the back or at home wherever he is. I'm not too sure. What a counter by Briggs though. Just falling out of the chest of Mike Miles. The bloody Brit saying he's tired of, you know, getting sent to the back of the line. It's time that he kicks doors and takes what he wants. Certainly backed up his words by winning that four-way on Genesis. Now he has yet another opportunity to get the payback against the OG Morgan Jackson, the man who relentlessly targeted foreign affairs. The last, like, three months, he's beaten Chris Andrews twice. So if you're a betting man, probably put your money on Jackson, but you never know what can happen. Fall away slam brings Duke down onto that wooden table there. It's just not falls count anywhere. Not count. No count outs, but got to pin or submit your opponent in the ring. And Mike Miles just having a good time with this table here. Trying to break that back of Duke. Get a bullplex onto it now. That's actually what he pinned Melvin O'Houlihan. I think Buzzsaw Jack's trying to get Oliver Kane into the ring here. He's having some trouble. He's pulling a Borton, though. Grabs the set of steel steps. Does Miles not done with Duke, it seems. We're waiting for him to walk over. Oh, ah, pulled the Bubba Ray Dudley there. Just bopped himself right in the uh, head with them steps. Kane now has Buzzsaw Jack in the ring. Duke and Miles have got to be careful here. Watch the ring. Watch for a pin. It's now. Oh, my God. Miles just flipped himself inside out. Got tossed in that barricade. Oh, what a boot from the octopus, though. Where's Kane going? Kane going up top. Kane has had very few CMB matches, but I didn't peg him as a high flyer. <laughs> Mike Miles, man. Oh, what do we got here? Choke slam by Duke on the Madman. Double pin from both teams, though. Ref's going to count Dukes. Oh, and he got it. That's a screw job. The referee not counting foreign affairs. Remember Oliver Kane's pin on Buzzsaw Jack, but then counting Duke's pin on Mike Miles. That was shady. But nonetheless, the ref, here's the ending right here. You see Kane go for a deadlift German into a pin, but then he got a choke slam on Miles. Double pin. Well, it kind of looks like Kane let go. Didn't have any stamina left in him, trying to break up the pin. 
And now it will be the Briggs family meeting X-Gen's Ryan, Kent, and Quantum at Purgatory to crown our inaugural Tornado Tag Team Champions. Duke gonna have to pull in double duty. Better pray that his last man standing match comes after the title match. Hope the anonymous GM takes some uh, pity on him. Another impressive win by this duo though. And now Duke has a chance to do what he couldn't alongside his brother Andrew Briggs and that's capture Tag Team Gold. Huge opportunity, monumental chance for the uh, newcomer. But saw Jack, it'll be his first pay-per-view at Purgatory. <clears throat> As up next to continue Monday Night Fusion here, Billy Weaver going to be in singles action, taking on CMV's only second-generation superstar, Bob Luger. And uh, Billy Weaver, of course, returning after a couple months away after being suspended by Triple H, returned in the Royal Rumble at Absolution, and then immediately after the show, <clears throat> got into a confrontation with Nick Blake, both men uh, in separate interviews, going back and forth. And these past two weeks since Absolution have been nothing but an out, just one giant brawl between the two that really took off on last week's Genesis when they were both arrested. But then Nick Blake returned in the police truck. Who knows what he did to those poor police officers just doing their job. But he returned in the police truck uh, with Billy captive in the back. He didn't know that Billy was awake, though. As soon as he opened up the back doors, Billy just... Went ham on him. The fight ended up spilling to the ring. Where uh, Nick Blake would hit. Head drama. Head drama. Try to do it like cop for you, Tim. I'll say it just like that every time he hits it. Love you, Tim. And uh, actually demanded a match against Billy Weaver. To put this brawl, this fight, this feud to an end. Uh, at Purgatory, Weaver obviously couldn't. No, wait a minute. Bob Luger. Wait a minute. Nick Blake. Assaulting Bob Luger, looking to take his place in this match against Billy, it seems. I did not see this coming. Billy Weaver not going to wait for Nick Blake to get to the ring. Oh, but Nick Blake just trying to surpass Billy. Gets caught with a double knee backbreaker instead. And I didn't even get to mention yet what happened earlier tonight before the show started. When Nick Blake came out here to the booze of the fans. Oh, and now smashing his head off the steel and pretty much said, yeah, never mind. Billy Weaver ain't worth my time. Billy Weaver ended up distracting Nick with a, 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 a pre-taped video on the Titan Tron. Attacked him from behind. The fight ended up spilling to the outside where Nick, or to the garage, I should say, where Nick Blake was able to escape in his car, even though Tim LaFave and, and Billy were trying to stop him. I guess Nick Blake has returned to the arena, ladies and gentlemen. Attacking Bob Luger backstage. Now he really wants to get his hands on Billy here. This match hasn't even officially started. We're getting another repeat of last week. The 20-minute outside brawl. Oh, this has been building, though. These two have been only going at it for not even two weeks, but definitely an anticipated matchup between the two. <clears throat> and they are set, by the way. The anonymous GM... Did book a match between the two at Purgatory, but now that Nick Blake is is taking Bob Luger's spot here, I'm not sure not too sure if it's gonna still happen. I guess we'll have to wait to hear from the anonymous GM. This is just getting out of control, though. These two are consuming everything in their path just to get their hands on each other. As Billy's not even letting Nick Blake get up anymore. Nick Blake, a former two-time television champion, on unmatched, debuted on Fusion and Genesis in the Royal Rumble match as well at Absolution. Actually entered pretty late. He was eliminated pretty quickly though as well. Two as well. Yes, two as well. As well too. And this is indeed going to be another 20 minute outside brawl. I can already tell. At least it makes sense between these two. Cross arm neckbreaker by Nick Blake. Counter after counter after counter though. Oh, now we're going up, back up the ramp. Nick Blake going to try to escape to his car again. <clears throat> Poor Bob Luger. Big win for him in his fusion debut last week over light heavyweight champion Shanaz Andoni. Comes out here full of confidence, looking to get another win. And Nick Blake just catching him off guard. Taking, taking this opportunity from him. Nick Blake making his fusion debut here now. <clears throat> At least his in-ring debut. Well, not in-ring debut, his ramp debut, probably should say. Will it be in-ring? Perhaps. He's trying to get Billy into the ring or just right into the barricade to... The gut of Billy just ramming into the corner, trying to pierce him on it, impale him on it. 
There we go. Into the ring finally. Is the ref going to ring the bells? Is it going to be an official match here? Billy's set to be in competition. Yes, the referee's ringing the bell. This is an official match, ladies and gentlemen. And Nick Blake, Billy Weaver's up top, going for his flying headbutt, maybe? No, an elbow drop horribly misses, though. He overshot that badly. Nick Blake is in La La Land, it seems, though. Once again, targeting the back of Blake's skull. Trying to crack it open like an egg. See that blood spill out. <clears throat> this match is officially started now. The ring bell has dinged. Side headlock by Blake in the ring. <clears throat> Talked about Nick Blake being a two-time television champion. Corporate Billy, though. And Corporate Billy, Cousin Billy, now Billy Weaver. Two-time light heavyweight champion. First ever two-time light heavyweight champion as well. Shanaz Andoni, also a two-time light heavyweight champ. Current champ. He'll be defending his belt. This Sunday against foes Andrew Briggs and Christopher Ann. A triple threat match, but these two are pretty evenly matched in their accolades. This whole thing really started between these two after Nick Blake said he's here to clean up the filth. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <coughs> Put a cork in that because Nick Blake looking to finish here. A drama by Nick Blake. Billy felt that last week on Genesis. Will it put him out for the three count? One, two, no, dang. Nick Blake talking to his frosted tips. How did Ed Drama not get the job done? The Billy section is on fire. They're all on their feet chanting for the hillbilly. Everybody's favorite cousin, but a second head trauma. I don't know if anybody could kick out of that. Oh, we're going to be what does Billy have in mind here? Ah! Snapmare by Blake. He's got Weaver sized up right now, right where he wants him. Trying to stay in the driver's seat. Side headlock now in a grounded position. Blake is pressing hard. Not letting go. Oh, well, just let's go there. Billy's rolling to his feet as quickly as he could. Leaned up against the ropes is Billy. I just I just uh, freaking popped into my, my mind. There'll be no tweets tonight. <clears throat> a tweet-free fusion. Never thought I'd see the day. I bet people are still tweeting too. <laughs> I guess I, I could see it on the playback. Other people could see it on the playback. Oh, Nick Blake almost sending himself through the, the announce table there. With that sheer anyway. Where's my cowboy hat? It's looking a bit... Billy stole it. Dirty thief. I couldn't imagine Nick Blake wearing a uh, wearing a cowboy hat. That's why I blame Billy. Count of five. Both men back into the ring. Billy's the first one to gain control. Oh, might be looking for those corner trapped elbows. We're not going to find out though. Blake counters with a jawbreaker. Fireman's carry takeover now. Reversal Fest 1999 up in here. I get into the corner. Billy's definitely looking for his signature. Or, or maybe not. The shout out, though. Billy is a real thug. I'm going to have to turn down this AC. It's actually getting pretty cold now. Shoots the half. Does Billy? One. Just a one count, though. For the two time light heavyweight champ. Both men are tired. Don't blame them. Beating the shit out of each other week in and week out. Every single episode, every single day. I'm sure they're beating each other up even when the cameras aren't rolling. That's Billy. Going to go for a springboard, maybe? I've never seen Billy go for a springboard before. Missed another elbow. Stop going for elbow drops. Oh, Nick Blake. Where did he get that from? A second. A drama. And like I said before, you're not kicking out of two of these. Billy was lucky the first time. Drags him away from the ropes. Does Nick Blake. He knows he has this match. One lateral press. Not even hooking the legs. One. Two. Three. Put this on fan real quick. <clears throat> so Nick Blake returning to the arena after barely escaping the clutches of Billy earlier tonight before Fusion went on the air. Attacking Bob Luger backstage, taking his place in this match, and he wins his Fusion debut by delivering two Ed Dramas to his rival, Billy Weaver. 
And as we watch these highlights, guys, my computer just dinged. I got an email from the anonymous general manager, and he has to say, and I quote, I am sick and tired of these two causing chaos everywhere they go, involving backstage crew, taking up showtime. Nick Blake coming out here when he wasn't even booked, not on my watch, not on my show. It is a new era. So at Purgatory, Nick Blake will still go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Billy Weaver, but it'll be falls count anywhere so big announcement from the general manager right there ladies and gentlemen this Sunday at Purgatory Nick Blake and Billy Weaver again but falls count anywhere this time a match certainly fitting for the, what these two have been putting each other through lately but tonight Nick Blake wins this impromptu challenge taking poor Bob Luger's fusion time Nick Blake with a smirk on his face as he makes his fusion debut with a winning effort. And Nick Blake's rampage continues. Who will he attack next? I hope he doesn't attack anyone next. Poor Bob Luger. Hopefully he didn't get injured. Maybe he did. Oh, Bill Weaver now suffering a downward status effect as Nick Blake gets a nice up arrow. Upwards arrow. I got to find out what those are actually called. They're saying downwards arrow, upwards arrow. I'm pretty sure they have names. <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh, shucky ducky, ladies and gentlemen, quack quack. It is time for our championship bout of the evening. The CMB World Tag Team titles on the line one last time. It ends here tonight. If Fast and Furious lose the belts, they won't get a rematch. If T and Lee lose uh, <clears throat> their rematch right here, they ain't getting another crack at the belts. So long as Fast and Furious are champions, the anonymous GM wants this to come to an end once and for all, making it elimination rules. Will T and Lee make it into a third reign? Indeed, prove that Fast and Furious' win at Absolution two weeks ago was just a fluke. They got lucky. Or will old Bob Storm and the man with the mohawk once again pull off the upset? Put down the longest reigning champs in Season 3. And continue on in their own reign. Elimination rules, of course. Be a standard tag match. But you got to eliminate both members of the opposing team to walk out with the gold. Much like our match at Purgatory will be for the Tornado Tag Team belts. Briggs family taking on X-Gen, except there'll be Tornado rules. All four men active at the same time. T and Lee were so close to at least matching. Hashtag trending worldwide's reign seven months T and Lee were at five at Absolution, but Fast and Furious realizing that was their last opportunity, put it all on the line, gave it their all. Certainly shocked the fans, shocked me. I had to take the, my, my headset off for a second. Couldn't believe it. T and Lee, almost like an indestructible force. Didn't think any, anything could beat them, at least when they're together. I actually heard that uh, old Timmy Boy the Timster has actually put on, donned his old attire. I'm excited. I was a big fan of Tim's old attire. He's, he's bringing in the big guns here tonight. The OG Timmy Boy the Timster attire guys here tonight for this title match. Don't know if Kevin will be wearing pants. He usually dons the pants for pay-per-views. I guess we'll have to wait and see. I don't think he is, though. Reports backstage tell me he probably is not wearing the pants. Power outage or something? What's going on? Nick Blake and Billy Weaver beating the shit out of each other again near the uh, the production truck. Oh, it says it's lagging. Hello, lag. Oh, here we go. First time we've seen the Fast and the Furious with those championships around their waist, held proudly by many teams that have come and gone throughout CMV's history. Hashtag Shredding Worldwide, X Gen, the Mega Stars, the Nice Guys. The Mexican militia, you name it. Let's see if these two can make those former champs proud. That belt barely fits around the waist of poor Frank, though. Should wear it on his mohawk. And as always, oh no, usually T and Lee make us wait like 10 seconds before they come out here. Build some tension, but they're all, they're focused here tonight. They want them belts back. 
They want to beat hashtag trending with why it's rain. It can restart here tonight or they'll fall down to the bottom. Oh, there it is. That vintage Timmy attire against all odds and Kevin indeed donning the shorts. No pants here tonight. There's no playing around. It's so weird seeing these guys without the championships. I don't think I've ever seen Kevin Lee's belly button. This is new for me. I'm experiencing new emotions. We still have so much to get to here tonight, too. We got Quinn Bell and Jay Devine going at it. A match that's sure to show high respect between the two. Quinn Bell can defeat Jade. Fury will have to defend her title. Put the title on the line in their Hell in a Cell match in Purgatory. We still got our main event to come. Champion versus champion. Jacob Ziegler and Brian Novak in a clash. As T and Lee are looking ready to get them championships back, player. Referee holds up that gold. Both teams know what's on the line. It's going to be Bob Storm kicking things off against Tim Lefave. <clears throat> and it was, I believe it was, I believe it was Bob. Actually, I think it was Frank who pinned Tim, the absolution, capture the belts. See if Tim tries to get a little payback on the man with the Mohawk. A little back and forth, feeling each other out. Fought many a times. I think four matches against each other now have T and Lee and the Fast and the Furious. Still have that volume up, my bad. Forgot about that. <clears throat> but, uh, well, this will be four here tonight. Two times T and Lee came out the victor. And at Absolution, obviously, Bob Storm and Frank won. This will be their fourth time, I believe. Maybe third. I think fourth, though. Going at it. And their last time. At least for a good while. Anonymous general manager wants to give new teams a chance to flourish, to shine. Oh, a nice corkscrew neckbreaker. Of course, bringing in them tornado tag team titles. And I've gotten word with the new superstar initiative. We've had even more tag teams uh, show up on the scenes. Tonight, we'll see the debut of the League of Dudes taking on Bison and Duo Max. What a horribly attempted Inziguri. And a second one and a third one. Miss all of them. Tag to Frank now. As the man, Kevin Lee and Furious Frank, actually, I think they're the same height here. It's just that fucking mohawk. Oh, what a kick. What a kick. Yeah. Connecting the heel right to the nose. And these two, I, I said earlier, you know, to finally bring the feud, the rivalry to them, but these two have shown nothing but the utmost respect for each other. It's just in that ring, there are no friendships. You can't afford to... Uh, well, you can show respect. You know, don't play dirty. Don't use them dirty heel tactics. But you got to do anything you have to to win. Retain them titles or win those titles. Remember, both members of one team have to be eliminated. We've seen it happen multiple times before. It's come down to two-on-one, one-on-one. Anything can happen. Tag to Bob Storm. Frequent tags here by Fast and Furious. Working well so far for him. <clears throat> nice straight jacket by Bobby. <clears throat> leg drop to follow it up. Try to keep Kevin Lee down. He can't use those kicks of his martial arts abilities. Hypothetical martial arts, I should say. Punch him in the back of the face. Nice counter out of that scoop slam, though. Suplex City. Like four Germans that are already in this match. Tim asking Kevin Lee for that tag, saying, come on, I want some. Oh, that vintage Tim attire. <clears throat> Against all... Ah, I don't know what happened right there. I think Tim made a counter. It looked kind of funny from that angle, though. Nice chest bump. Front head locked by Bob Storm. And a nice little hip toss. <clears throat> you know, Tim LaFave is all about them old school maneuvers. He can wow us from time to time with some moonsaults from the second rope in a standing position, but very old school. Here's... Many variations of suplex. He's got a butterfly right there. Bob Storm, a high flyer, likes to take risks. Furious Frank, nothing but power. And, of course, the martial arts ability of Kevin Lee about to be shown, maybe. Or tag immediately. Frequent tags now by Lee. T and Lee, what a kick by Kevin, though. My goodness. My goodness. And as I touched on earlier, T and Lee's uh, record in elimination matches ain't so good. Last time they had one, they lost their 
in their first reign as champs, live in Tokyo, defeated by two-man power trip. Oh, wait a minute, sit out face buster. And let's remember that T and Lee lost those titles to uh, Zach, Zach Payne and Ryan Cass. They already competed in three other tag matches prior in the night. T and Lee are fresh right now, as they were then. Fast and Furious are fresh as well. Snap suplex by the hypothetical Kung Fu practitioner. I believe this might be Fast and Furious' first elimination. Oh, there's that martial arts background on display, man. You blink, you missed it. Slaps and chops and punches and dick grabs and all that good stuff. And a 2.9999999 on old Storm there. And now Kevin just stalking Bob, waiting for the masked man to get to his feet. Wasted too much time, though. And now we might see a Tokyo Drift. Yes, we are. And it's going to be the big man, Frank Soren, off the top. And when that happens, you are not getting up. Better hope Tim can help his partner here. <clears throat> Into the pin. Can Tim break up? Can Tim break it up? Yes, he can. Bob Storm was too slow. And now Bob Storm just mean mugging Tim to get out of the ring. <coughs> We're after beginning the count. I don't know if Storm and Tim are fighting right now. I can't really tell the camera angle here, even though I'm sitting right in front of them. I think they are, though. Like I said earlier, you know, they might show respect for each other. They might even be friends. But when the championship is on the line, there's no room for that stuff. Got to do whatever you can to win. And I can indeed hear punching and slamming. So Bob Storm and Tim Lefebvre are indeed fighting next to me here at the announce table. And there's Bob Storm. Apparently he won the encounter because Tim's not on his apron. And Bob just gingerly walking over. As Frank just continues the beating on Kevin. Sit out face buster. Kevin already receiving the Tokyo Drift. If Tim doesn't help his partner out again, it might be lights out for Lee. Oh, no, Kevin somehow, someway kicking out on his own, even though Bob Storm able to stop Tim. Oh, that was lucky, right? That was nothing but heart right there. I don't even want to say luck. That was heart on display by Kevin. And Bob better get out of the ring, man. He's going to count it out. There we go. What is happening with the top rope there, though? He's going out with that top rope. Just gonna stay like that, okay. Oh, Scott! <laughs> there we go, the rope fixes itself. I almost missed that dragon screw. Oh, I just said it the right way. My bad. Tim now, nice and fresh, hasn't certainly hasn't taken as much damage as Kevin has. See if he can bring the match back for T and Lee here. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, Kevin, you have very nice forearms. What a wicked punch by Tim. Didn't seem to do too much damage on Frank there. As now old Timmy Boy going to taste that Tokyo Drift as he has before. And Bob Storm going to be the one flying through the air this time. Tim should be able to kick out on his own, but Kevin's going to try to help him out anyway. Too slow, though. Frank stops him, and there goes Tim eliminated. Now it's all down to Kevin Lee. Two-on-one situation now for the hypothetical Kung Fu practitioner. Tim has been eliminated. Suicide dive attempt somehow connects horribly botched, though. Bob Storm not giving Kevin Lee a second to breathe. Tim Lefebvre has been eliminated. The OG attire didn't do him any good. Fast and furious looking at her tan. They got the upper hand. Kevin's already been dealt a lot of damage here. <clears throat> Without his best friend, his partner with him on his own, can Lee succeed? <laughs> Going to try to maybe get the count out victory here on Storm. Good strategy. <clears throat> Kevin Lee, hey. Count of six. Maybe Kevin Lee get the count out victory here. Hey, every chance he gets, but it looks like Storm's going to get to his feet. Kevin realizes it. Going to roll back out to greet him. And now Bob Storms unleashing an absolute fury <laughs> on the man who can punch you in the back of the face. Kevin certainly not going down without a fight. <laughs> now rammed hard into the still on the post, actually. He ran, trying to crack his coconut. That, did that fan just yawn? I'm not sure if he yawned or if he's cheering. Like a little kid in the green shirt. Fuck you, little kid in the green shirt. Fight me. 
Count of six, Bob Storm back in the ring. Kevin's got to be careful not to get Irish whipped into the corner. He'll be caught with a second Tokyo Drift. Oh, no, Kevin counters. I don't know if, it, if they went for a finisher, though. I'm not too sure. Oh, Kevin, Tim's gone. You can't go for your tag, Finn, bud. Timmy Boy has been eliminated. I think Kevin forgot there for a second. Over the shoulder, single knee gut buster by Bobby. Just trying to wear down Kevin a little bit, keep him grounded, or lift him right back to his feet. A second sit-out face buster. That might spell the end. Busted wide open. The hypothetical Kung Fu Practitioner. Oh, no. Bob, he wants to make sure that Kevin Lee is finished. Showing respect, at least. No, they're not even going for their tag fin, though. What is this? Scoop slam by Bob. Oh, my God. The Mohawk to the dick. The Mohawk to the dick. By God, end this. But, no. What? A, what is this? Oh, wheelbarrow face buster, man. They are just decimating Kevin Lee. Oh, Kevin Lee should have took that opening and tried to take down Frank while Bob Storm was getting back onto the apron, but he let it pass him by, and it might cost him now. Kevin is a fighter, man. How long can he fight for, though? Gets cracked in the jaw with that fist. With that fist. What is this from Frank? A brain muster! From Frank? I haven't seen him hit that before. And Frank, unlike Bob Storm, thinks that's going to be enough. Shoots the half. One, two, three, and it is. Fast and Furious are still our CMV World Tag Team Champions. Absolution was not a fluke. They proved it here tonight. And for now, T and Lee's time in the sun is done. Clean sweep for the masked man. And the Mohawk King. Fidgeting with my mic wire right now. T and Lee will undoubtedly go down in history as one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Two-time champs, five months in their second reign, but Fast and Furious are now on the scene as are a multitude of other teams, duos, Coming to CNB Fusion and Genesis. This tag team scene is hot. Who will be next to step up to the plate to challenge these men? And what's next for T and Lee? And here's the finish following. A Tokyo Drift, two sit out face busters. And then this brain buster. Kevin. He went down kicking. Punching and kicking. But the fast and the furious with the better pairing on this night. Mmm, this black screen. What is up with the production truck? I'm I'm definitely calling it. Billy and Nick are fighting again backstage. Fucking with the goddamn truck again. Get these guys into raps already. Bob Storm and Furious Frank remain the world tag team champions. Who's gonna step up next to challenge these guys? <clears throat> A wave of tag teams coming at them. I think these guys are going to be champs for a while. As our next match of the evening has some huge implications of its own for Purgatory. Kitty Quinn Bell going one-on-one -on -one with American sweetheart Jay Divina. An opponent handpicked by Fury after last week on Genesis, the anonymous GM announced that <clears throat> though Fury was right and that Quinn Bell can't demand anything, especially a title match, Fury was in the wrong as well, thinking that she can decide when or when not she puts her belt on the line. That's up to the GM. So he said, Fury, you pick an opponent for Quinn to face here tonight, and if Quinn can beat said opponent, then your championship will be on the line inside Hell in a Cell at Purgatory. But if Quinn Bell loses... 
then it will remain a non-title collision. The match is happening either way, but Quinn Bell wants one more chance at that championship. She wants the opportunity to co-main event the grandest stage of them all. And hey, if Quinn Bell does beat Jade here tonight <clears throat> and then beats Fury inside Hell in a Cell, we're going to get a rematch between the two. It's Jade Devine winning the first annual CMV Vixens Mini Royal Rumble at Absolution, eliminating all five of her opponents to punch her ticket to the co-main event of the show of shows. And as usual, we got Jacob Ziegler there in Quinn Bell's corner. And it looks like the Asian sensation, Jay Devine's brother, Sushi X, a man who has his own title match coming his way. In fact, for Jacob Ziegler's anarchy title, going to be in the corner of his sister, making sure there's no shenanigans here. And Jacob Ziegler has a match of his own coming on later on tonight. Coming on later on. And the main event, I believe it's Ziegler's first main event match. So, uh... <clears throat> nice for the Scott as he uh, goes one-on-one -on -one against Brian Novak. Opportunity to prove that he belongs in the main event scene. But as we've seen lately, Brian Novak not to be underestimated as he gets set to defend his world title at uh, Purgatory <clears throat> against Justin Saint Sushi X. Going to be main eventing this Sunday's pay-per-view inside Hell in a Cell as well. He takes on Hayden, a rivalry that's been boiling over verbal exchanges nonstop on Twitter. And we actually had Hayden <clears throat> on commentary a couple weeks ago and then Sushi on commentary just last episode going hard at each other. Nearly three years after their first encounter inside the Devil's Playground. It'll all come to an end this Sunday. State of the coalition still uncertain after Jacob Ziegler assaulted its leader, Xander Slate, on Genesis. Gave Slate a minor concussion. Slate said in an interview later on in the night, though, that Jacob Ziegler's just jealous. He saw his act of kindness on Fusion as a power play. Jacob Ziegler made a mistake when he attacked me. And just as I've always done, I'm going to have to beat my students' ass now, as I did with Jerome Robinson, as I did with Aaron White, as I did with Randy Borton, and as I did with Tim LaFave. Now it must be with Jacob Ziegler. So obviously Ziegler ain't in the coalition anymore. Xander Slate doesn't seem to uh, doesn't seem to be bothered with it right now. So what does that mean for Bison and Duo and Paul Anderson? <clears throat> Jacob Ziegler keeping his distance because it's all about Quinn Bell right now. The main event will be about Ziegler and she'll be accompanying him as well. Will she have a smile on her face though when she comes out? Will she have another shot at the title? Queen of Botchville. Certainly facing one of her biggest challenges yet. A match that's happened many times when Kitty Quinn Bell first showed up on the scene here in CMV. Jay Devine was her first opponent. Actually beat Kitty twice. It has been a long time since then, though. Had the times changed, Jay Devine seems virtually unstoppable, the wave that she's been on, wave of momentum. Eliminating five of her opponents in the Vixens Mini Royal Rumble. And last week, Jade and Kitty actually teamed up in a winning effort over. Aura and Cassie Maverick, tag action. These two respect each other, they're friends. But Jade needs that momentum heading into ascendance and Qu Quinn Bell needs to get past the cheeky Japanese girl here tonight. She has any hopes of taking the belt off Fury at Purgatory. <clears throat> Quinn Bell saying either way, whether the title's on the line or not, you are not gonna make it to ascendance once I'm through with you inside Hell in a Cell. Where the things really first started between the Urban Warrior and the Queen of Botchville. Back at Dark Carnival when Fury pinned Quinn to win her first Vixens championship. Jay's looking ready as always, getting the fans hyped up and on their feet. Looks like Jacob Ziegler and Sushi X are kind of trash talking each other over there in the corner. <clears throat> they better not take the focus off this match. Quinn Bell, Jay Devine, big time implications for this Sunday. Here we go. Referee going to ring the bell. Sushi X ringside for his sister, making sure Jacob Ziegler don't try any shenanigans. This is a high-flying ability and risk-free <coughs> style of... Sorry, Dad, I have something in my fucking throat right now. A dick. Uh, Risk-free style of Jay Devine going up against the botch-tastic Quinn Bell here. Lengthy. Got that length over Devine. Certainly that height. Jay Devine just a great technician as well, though. She can counter almost any move. Catch you out of nowhere. 
their Hurricanranas and Head Scissors DDTs. Quinn Bell going to be looking for that Botchplex for the win. Or Quinn for the win, even. That Moonsault she's recently debuted. Oh, look at that from Quinn Bell. I haven't seen that animation yet. I always see a new animation from this game. Nearly breaking her arm. There's that Hurricane Ron I was talking about. Thin air. Quinn right back to her feet, though. Seems to be targeting that arm almost of Jade here. Oh, and a slap. Whoa, that's not very respectful of Quinn. Letting Jacob Ziggler get in her head, maybe the Anarchy Champion. Looking at that ass from ringside. I'm looking at Jade's ass. I'm not, I'm not going to lie about it. Xander Slate actually said in that interview as well, trying to get under the skin of Jacob Ziegler. Not only saying if you want to see a laugh, check out his failed football career, his plays, you'll have a good time, but also targeting Quinn Bell, saying she gives him nightmares. Up against the ropes goes Jade now. Irish whip rebounds as America's sweetheart gets caught with a crossbody. Look at Kitty kind of felt divine up a little bit there. Sushi X dusting himself off. He's got that Anarchy Championship match coming up after Purgatory against Jacob Ziegler. Currently 79 days as Anarchy Champion Ziegler's on here tonight. Longest reigning champ of all time. Will that be stopped by Sushi? Will Sushi be going in the title match with a big win at Purgatory over Hayden inside Hell in a Cell? We'll find out. <clears throat> Since I'm streaming on Thursday, guys, I'm supposed to stream yes tomorrow, I should say, uh, on Friday usual time, but since I'm streaming Thursday... I'll say Tim will probably post the card either tomorrow or Saturday, so I'll stream Genesis on Sunday, post the Purgatory card on Monday, then maybe have it on maybe on a Wednesday or Thursday or maybe Friday still. Nice little week build. Or I'll probably have it on Wednesday or Thursday, though. <clears throat> so Kitty has definitely found her target here in the arm of Jay Devine, it seems. Just went for a submission. Fujiwara armbar out of a tilt-a-whirl. Oh, shutting down that Hurricane Rana, though, with a thunderous power bomb. Hooks the leg. One... Two, and 2.9999, Quinn's getting there. She can taste that win. She can taste that championship feel, the gold on her fingertips. She had her shot, though, at Absolution, and she failed. Fury slayed her dreams. As she's put it herself these past few weeks. Nice wrist lock suplex there. Divine ain't putting Quinn over, though. What's she going for here? Irish whooping to the corner. Maybe sized her up for that Divine Arrow. We know what comes first from time to time. The spider suplex. Haven't seen the combination in a while, but Quinn ain't going to let it happen. Taking a risk of her own. Another crossbody off the top. <clears throat> Grabbing Jade by the hair. Yeah, we've seen Quinn Bell use a couple of dirty heel tactics in this match thus far, but like I said in the last bout, the tag team uh, title match, you know, you might respect someone, might be friends with someone, but when an opportunity like this is on the line, you got to do whatever you can to get the win. Seems like Jacob Ziggler and Sushi X be eating too many Doritos here and keep brushing themselves off. Reverse chin lock. Quinn Bell right to her feet and a nice wheel kick comes out of nowhere. Certainly catching Divine off guard. <clears throat> Through her uh... <clears throat> <clears throat> Through her back a couple centuries. Uh oh! Irish sleeper cinched in. The arms are flailing when they stop. Divine might be sleeping. Doesn't tap out. But she might be passed out. Quinn making sure there's no rope break shenanigans. Shoots the half. Ref getting a sniff of that vag. And only a one count for Quinn. That can't feel too good. Devon just no selling that cigarette there. Oh man, I felt that forearm. Jesus. And Jade, what is she going for here? The cheeky Japanese girl. Irish whip off the ropes. Oh, what a hip toss. <clears throat> Got her a good 20 feet up in the air right there. My goodness. Divine. Going to try going for the spider suplex. Divine arrow uh, combination again. I don't know if she has enough stamina, though. Enough in her to get it done. Oh, I underestimated her. There it is. Spider suplex. We know what comes next. Divine Arrow. Quinn gets caught with this. It's over. No shooting star press. Shades of her brother Sushi ringside. It looks like Quinn's done, guys. That arm is limp. No, Quinn Bell digging down deep to kick out of that one. She actually went through her with that shooting star press. She went into the canvas. Whoa! Botchplex. 
Divine getting ahead of herself, wiping the sweat from her face. Wait a minute, is that Sushi distracting the referee? Sushi X distracts the referee, and Jacob Ziegler takes that opportunity to toss in a steel chair. And now Jacob Ziegler's distracting the referee. Quinn Bell uses the steel chair. Oh, the ref just almost saw her, too. That was close. What is happening in this match right now? Quinn Bell just used a steel chair on Jay Devine. That is not very respectful. And Devine ain't taking it laying down. That bass got to be throbbing now. Both Jacob Ziegler and Sushi X making their presence felt there in a matter of seconds. Ziegler's proud of himself. Cheeky golf clap ringside. He is getting in the head of Quinn Bell. I don't like it. Teaching her them dirty heel tactics, poisoning her mind. Surfboard stretch targeting that damaged back with the shot of the steel chair. Knee into the spine, wrenching back on the arms. This match is not what I expected between the two, but it's very good. Very back and forth. High angle match grab slam. Grabs the leg. And ref not going to count the pin. I don't think anyone's distracting him. Okay, then. Ref decided not to count that pin right there. He said, nah. I don't feel like out the ref isn't glitched from all those distractions at like one time. He's not moving, so I feel like he might be. I think the ref might be glitched, guys, which kind of sucks. As I think Jade's going for another spider suplex here. No, she's not. Smacks that ass, though. Gonna go for a big time German. And the ref, okay, is he moving, though? I'm not sure what's going on. Certainly, the gas tanks are running low, these two vixens. It's been a hellacious match thus far. Oh, bangerang! Bangerang by Jay Devine out of nowhere. Very rarely do we see her resort to using that. Always goes from the Divine Arrow. Oh, and Jacob Zico distracting the referee, though. I doubt he even would have counted the pin. <laughs> Maybe that, that distraction, though, will bring him back. I'm not sure he's I think this ref is contemplating suicide right now I'm not sure what's happening we got to see another pinfall attempt where Siegel doesn't break it up oh standing shooting star press go for a pin Jade see if the ref counts it Quentin Bell's got to figure out where to nah I think he's glitched because he's not moving he's glitched he's glitched big time well he just wiped his hand Going for another German suplex off the top. Could be enough to put Quinn away, but if the ref decides to kill himself, doesn't really matter. Springboard moonsault turning in the air and all. Divine's just having some fun right now. Quinn Belt once showing some life. Oh, going to go for that Irish sleeper immediately. Jade shuts her down, though. <clears throat> Counters into a Russian leg sweep. Jacob Ziegler looking around. What are you thinking, Ziegler? We don't need any more dirty heel tactics. Come on, ref. Come back to life. What's Quinn going for here? Oh, cartwheel elbow drop. Shades of Chris Adams. I'm glad uh, Quinn's such a big fan. Back to the surfboard stretch. Going after that damaged area. Sushi X feeling the pain of his sister. Sushi's not going to go for a dirty heel tactics, is he? He's looking around, thinking he's going to grab a steel chair. Sushi again. Jay cannot get out of this. Quinn's going to have to let go, show mercy. Jay's going to have to tap here. Oh my god, this is going on for a long... Okay, there you go. Finally, let's go. And Jade right back to her feet. Her arms are hurting something fierce, though. Oh, great. Here we go. Snapmare from Jade. And a reverse chin lock. Guys, I feel like if the ref is glitched, uh, next time one of these two hit a finisher, I'm just going to count the three myself. And that's just how we'll end this match. I'm not about restarting it this late in. Oh, ref might be alive. He's staring at Sushi. I think the ref has to think for Sushi here, maybe. Oh, my God. What the hell was that? 
boot out of nowhere in the corner. One, two, three, and Quinn Bell gonna get the win, ladies and gentlemen, because I say so, and I'm not about restarting that match, and I can't see the chat freaking out, so I don't know what's going on. Should I restart the match? I'm not sure. Should I restart the match? I feel like I gotta restart the match. Oh, I don't wanna start the match. It's going on for so long, though. I don't feel like I don't want it. It's going on for so long. What if the ref gets glitched again? Uh, I feel like I gotta restart the match, though. I can't do that. I can't screw like that. Can't screw either one of these lovely ladies. I'll put it on fast, though. We'll put it on fast. I'm just toying with you guys. I would never do that. I was seriously contemplating doing it, though. But here we go. We're just continuing the matches. Just, just you know, pretend. Pretend that airplanes and the night sky like shooting stars. We can pretend that this match is just continuing on. Jay Devine kicked out of that big boot in the corner, that halluva kick. And now this fight spills to the outside. Drop kick into the barricade. It looks like Jay might have chipped her tooth. Down to three by the ref already. Leg drop right in front of Sushi X. Sushi hands off. Don't want to risk a DQ here. I'm pretty sure if you even touch a Vixen when you're ringside, it's a DQ. Much like we saw a couple weeks ago, someone kicked Quinn in the face when she was ringside for a Jacobs match, and they got DQ'd. But every time a superstar fucking Russian leg sweeps or goddamn does a choke slam to someone on the outside, the ref's just like, nah. What is a sexism, ref? Come on. Claps the hands, dusting them off. Quinn Bell thinks it's finally over. One, but only a one count. Ooh, okay. Not too sure what happened. I think she went for the wheel kick, but she hit her chest instead. Jay didn't know how to react. Botchamania. The big botch girl, Quinn Bell. Let's just hope that Ziegler and Sushi X don't uh, distract the ref at the same time again and warp his mind, turn it to mush, make him contemplate death. What do we got here? What the hell? Oh, my God. Another animation I haven't seen before. Two animations now. I've never seen before with these two guys. That was awesome. What a counter. Like I said before, such a technician. One of the greatest technicians without a doubt is America's sweetheart. She can counter anything at any time. Oh, Rising Sun. We usually see Quinn Bell hit that like to honor, to pay respects to her friend Jade. But as we've seen in this match so far, dirty heel tactics on display by Quinn Bell. Letting Jacob Ziggle poison her mind. She slapped Jade. She's hit some uh, dirty heel maneuvers. Used a steel chair on the cheeky Japanese girl when the ref wasn't looking. Pinfall attempt now, but only a two count. Landing with some nice elbows. She wraps her long legs around the chest and throat of Divine. It's all Quinn Bell right now. She is dominating America's sweetheart. Got to do something. Oh, a second Irish sleeper cinched in, though. And indeed, it could be lights out. Doesn't tap. But we might get a one, two, three. Make sure to hook the leg. Juan at, oh, only a one count again. Quinn Bell cannot be loving this. Jade Devine all about burying them fins and seeks. Finally, a sign of life from Jade. Forearm after forearm. Now a knife head shot. Woo! But I'll put her in the corner. What is Devine going for? She can't already have a sig, can she? No, a nasty. She just kicked her in the but he just kicked her in the ass, right in the ass crack. And then takes her down with an elbow. Oh, now Divine turning the tables, going for Quinn's arm here. How does that feel? How does that feel, Quinn? Oh, went for the botchplex, went for the botchplex. Quinn Bell getting her finisher counter. Jacob Ziegel realizing it, trying to help his girlfriend out here, his bay out and distract Jade. Didn't really matter though. Quinn was already in the process of hitting that pump panel backbreaker. Oh, I got my pants off. I'm, lo I'm lo 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 loving this. That was for you, Topher. Dang, one ahead but after another. Jade might have gotten that finisher counter but Quinn is all over here in the driver's seat. Got to turn the CC back on. Whew. Got hot real quick. 
Die real quick. Fucking 90 degrees. Get out of here. Middle of the ring. Hooks the leg. Two count getting closer and closer, though, is Quinn. Still to come, guys. Bison and Duo Maxwell battle the debuting pairing of the League of Dudes, the returning Mighty Dude, and his sidekick of Wonder Dude. And Jacob Ziegler still set to go to war against Brian Novak tonight's main event. Champion versus champion. Thought she's going for Quinn for the win. Woo! Another big time knife edge chop instead. Oh, and then a wicked kick to the spine. No care for Jade's health. Oh, and a second Irish sleeper. I don't think Jade's going to be kicking out of this one, guys. I don't think she's going to tap. I don't think Jade would ever tap. <clears throat> Not after the role she's been on. Very resilient, but might have just had the, the life choked out of her. Oh, my God. What do I tell you guys? Jade Devine just takes my breath away. What even was that, though? That was insane. Now what do we got here? Oh! <laughs> Catapult cutter. Oh, but Jacob Ziegler pretending he's fiddling with the turnbuckle. Ref's not buying it. One, two. Oh, Quinn Bell. A little, a couple of seconds. Jacob Ziegler had the ref's attention, though. Might have saved his girlfriend there. The ref said, nah, Ziegler. Not going to contemplate suicide because of you again. Man, she sent Quinn flying, though, catching it with that cutter face first. Mwah! Kiss to all her millions of fans. Takes the bow. A leg drop. Is that a bug on my TV? Yes, it is. What is that? A gnat? Get out of here. Gnats. <sighs> Get out of here. Get off my TV. Oh! Nice time. Now I'm cold. Now I feel like I have menopause or something. Huh? I'm cold. Oh, again to that arm. The opposite arm, though. Both arms. Trying to break them off. They are like twigs. Eat something, Quinn. Oh, bangerang! That's what almost put down Quinn earlier in the match. Jacob Ziegler's not happy. Hooks the leg. Oh, Ziegler, though. Come on, Sushi. Do something, dude. Sushi X ringside doing nothing but... Showing moral support for his sister. He's not a dirty heel, I understand, but come on. Go punch Ziggler in the face or something. Oh, Quinn for the win! Quinn for the win! Oh, my God! Oh, Sushi! There we go! Sushi X had his hands on his head. He didn't want to do it, but he pulls out the referee. And now the ref's arguing with him. Not going to eject him, though, of course. He's, ha he's ha They're having some words, though. Sushi X didn't want to do that. You could see... By his, uh, the way his body was moving. He didn't want to do it, but he had to. Jacob Ziegler, gonna, Jacob Ziegler and Quinn Bell get a taste of their own medicine here. As this epic match continues, what is Quinn going for up here? What do you got? Rolling Fireman's Carry. Yeah. All right. Perfect position. Oh, what the f those, that's springboard ability, though, for Quinn. Oh, dirty heel Jacob Ziegler. I'm just surprised she didn't botch it. There goes the steel chair. Will Quinn Bell use it again in this match? Wrist lock suplex. And now Ziegler. <laughs> Come on, man. Ref, grow, grow a pair. Eject these guys. Especially eject Jacob Ziegler. But even Sushi X. Come on. What is this, ref? Oh, yes, there goes Jacob Ziegler. Jacob Ziegler has been ejected. 450 splash off the springboard. Ziegler is upset. He's not happy, but he definitely deserved to be ejected there. Interfering like four times, and now Quinn Bell's all on her own. No bay to help her out. That steel chair is still sitting there. Hopefully the ref notice, notices it soon. Notices it. Sushiak's still ringside, though. Only interfered once. The ref's warning him. The ref's had enough. Oh, Quinn in the corner. Quinn for the win again. Oh, it's that big boot that got 2.9999. Ref sees the chair, thank God. And if Sushi doesn't pull a move again. Three! Quinn Bell gets the win off that nasty 
boot in the corner that just snaps Jade's head back. Some serious whiplash. And Quinn Bell, ladies and gentlemen, will meet Fury this Sunday inside a Hell in a Cell for the Vixens Championship. Title will be on the line. Quinn Bell certainly had a lot of help ringside from her bay, Jacob Ziegler. Got ejected, but it was too late for Divine. Got caught with that boot in the corner, and it would be all over. Jacob Ziegler certainly uh, did a number for quitting this match. See if she returns the favor later on tonight in the main event of Fusion when Ziegler goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Brian Novak, champion versus champion. Here's the end of this match. So Sushi didn't even want to look as his sister just got her neck twisted 360 degrees. Quinn Bell gets the pin. One, two, three. And Fury going to have to put that belt on the line. And now the Vixens main event in Absolution has many different outcomes. Will it be a rematch between Quinn Bell and Jay Devine? Or will it be what it was meant to be? Fury, the Urban Warrior, defending against America's Sweetheart. We find out this Sunday as Quinn is absolutely above herself right now. So happy. I'm not going to say well-deserved victory. Great match. Very back and forth. But them dirty heel tactics by Quinn and the multiple interferences by Ziegler. I'm not going to say it was deserved. But she got the win nonetheless. It goes down in the record books. And now she gets one more chance to headline Ascendance. As up next, I'm so excited. I am big fans of these two. I was always a big fan of Mighty Dude. Who only made one appearance here in CMV. Debuted, beat Quantum, and then left. Quit after that. Said, no, I'm done. That's the good, That's the best I'm ever going to do. And then he uh, left, but he's back now. Months later, he's found himself a sidekick. Wonder Dude, forming the League of Dudes. And now they debut here tonight against a uh, formidable <laughs> pairing. Bison and Duo Maxwell. Two of the most dominant Feared man in the history of CMV. Coalition. Certainly over for Jacob Ziegler and Xander Slate. I'm going to say that Bison and Joe Maxwell are parting ways. Looks like they're going to stay together, though. <clears throat> Out of the coalition, but together as a tag team, certainly I wouldn't want to see these two part ways. This has been a dreamed team in CMV since its conception, since Duo ever at least arrived on the scene. Bison is a season one veteran, of course. They haven't done so well. They've been tag team partners for a couple of months now. A couple of wins, but mostly losses. They haven't done so well. Let's see if we get a vintage Bison here tonight. Squash that, that young talent like he used to. Boom, 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 boom. I'm a little bit biased in this one, though. I'm a little bit biased. I got a League of Dudes poster on my wall. They already got merchandise having made their debut. CMB.com. $20. League of Dudes poster. Movie coming in 2019. And with the tag team uh, <clears throat> scene wide open, at least the number one contendership for the world tag team title belts. After T and Lee failed to recapture the titles earlier tonight, gets fast and furious. A win here will certainly get these teams recognized. Carter, stop scratching my bed or I'll kill you. Oh, the Empire of Pain. That's what I'm talking about. All right. The coalition seems to be gone now with Jacob Ziegler turning on Xander Slate. Those two go on their own way. Bison and Duo Max will stick together, though. The Empire of Pain, very fitting. Very fitting indeed for these guys. Bison, a two-time Intercontinental Champion. Duo Max will the second annual Royal Rumble winner and a former Undisputed Champion. And just look at them. I see these geese. I see these geese. These geese! I see these guys walk to the ring. I get pain everywhere. 
They didn't have to touch me. Dewars has to look at me. But I'll still kiss his back tat. See if these guys can inflict some pain on the League of Dudes. I really hope you guys can hear the music for this entrance that I'm very proud of for the League of Dudes. The Empire of Pain ready to go. Oh, yes. Here they come. Mighty Dude and Wonder Dude. <laughs> Here we go, League of Dudes. Making their CMB debut. Well, who might do to reign undefeated, though? Oh, look at that athleticism by the big man. Dude, 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 dude. I'm ready. I'm hype. I'm hype for this match. The Empire of Pain. Greeting the League of Dudes here to CMV. And Mighty Dude just throwing his sidekick to the Wolves. Oh my god, that size difference. Rest in peace. I didn't realize Wonder Dude was so small. Alright, the Barbarian is just going to eat him right now. He's literally going to eat him. He's going to inhale him. He's not even going to chew him or anything. He's just going to put him in his mouth and swallow. As Bison usually does. If you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm proud of myself for that one. Turn that AC down again. It's getting cold in here. Wonder Dude is certainly not backing down, though. As he slams the neither gargantuan barbarian. Now taking him for a walk up against the ropes. Irish Whip Bison rebounds. Oh, I'm going to pale. Shove those horns right through Wonderboy's eyes. Right through his eye sockets. Right through his lookers. His papers. I feel bad for Wonder Dude here. I was hyped for the debut. Now I just feel awful. Wise decision to tag in Mighty Dude who... I, I don't know. <laughs> He's certainly taller than Wonder Dude, but... Look at that back fat. Is this just DJ Moore under a mask? Confirm or deny. Someone who would know. Unmask that man. Mighty Dude is taking it to Bison. Hey, in his debut, he defeated Quantum, decided, yep, yeah, that's good, and then decided to retire. Went ahead and left. But he's back now to slay more giants and legends. Oh! Into the turnbuckle, shattering that spine. And now we get a tag to the God of Death, or maybe not. Yes, there we go. Bison have a little bit of trouble. Hard to see out of those masks. Leave him alone. And now he's back out on the apron. <clears throat> Up against the ropes. Irish whip rebounds his MD. Oh, a nice spine. Oh, showing off those muscles. Let me see that tattoo. I have the theme song stuck in my head. But da 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 Dude, 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 dude. Duo is cooking up something for uh, MD here, though. I'm not liking the looks of it. Nope, just going to stare at him. There we go. What a punch. Yeah. What a punch. Yeah. Referee begins his count. Duo's just staring at his downed foe. Fixing his pants. Fixing his gloves again. What is Maxwell doing here? I'm not too sure. Okay, Maxwell, you're all right. I think Maxwell might be violating that wellness policy. He seems to be a little bit out of it here. We're getting a Jeff Hardy victory road situation. Double axe handle. Mighty Dude makes the tag to Wonder Dude. Spins him around this height difference, though. Bison's a big guy of a duo. Seven foot tall. He stands, oh my goodness, highest point that Wonder Dude's ever been in his life. As this gets his ribs shattered. Another great team here tonight. I don't think the tag team scene has ever been hotter here. 
What the hell? Okay, then. <laughs> that was a little bit weird looking, but hey, it worked. I don't know if it uh, hurt a whole lot. I guess it did. Duo just had a heart attack. Heard it though. Tag team scene is hotter than it's ever been in CMV, without a doubt. New teams coming in every week. Wonder Boy says, fuck that shit. Wonder Dude, I should say. Wonder Boy, dude. Immediately caught with that wicked roundhouse kick. Staple of Bison's moveset. Single and gut buster now. Sucks the air right out of the poor sidekick. One. Two. First pinfall attempt of the match. Only going to get two count for Bison. Oh, and here comes the dreaded shoulder claw of doom. Which might actually be pretty dreaded for Wonder Boy when a man like Bison's applying. He looks like he's fighting out of it, though. Surprisingly, somehow. WD's got some cojones. Dang, Bison, relax. Simmer down, Bison. <laughs> trying to crack that. Trying to knock Wonder Dude's head clean off as it hits that wasteland and immediately follows it up with that inverted power slam. If I were Mighty Dude, I'd certainly try to get in there and help out his partner, and he just got past Duo. Actually, Elbow dropped his toes, which Maxwell's not too happy about. Going to chase him down for it. Looks like uh, MD's escaping, though. Bison trying to hit that tag fin. Duo not up on the ring apron yet. Duo deciding he doesn't want to get on the ring apron, I guess. Hurricane Rana by Wonder Dude. And if I were him, I'd try to tag him my partner right about now. Nope. <clears throat> WD ain't about it. And that's what he gets for it. A nasty powerbomb by the powerbomb machine. Bison, who once hit 11 powerbombs in a single match. And now we're going to get that devastating tag thing we've seen before from these two. The Empire of Pain. Look at that duo from the top. Powerbomb elbow drop combo does the deed. One, two. Oh, oh dang. Why did you just knock Bison clean out? That was a 2.999999. Nine 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 nine. I don't think Wonder Dude knows where he is right now. Oh, I missed those two K fifteen physics. Oh. Okay. What? Hello. All right then. All right. Yeah. Hey, it worked eventually. Eventually. And now I think the Empire Pen are just having some fun here, at the expense of. Poor WD. Shark Boy, where is Lava Girl? They definitely need to make a uh, a fucking valet Lava Girl. Oh, or Lava. I don't know. D lava Dudette? I don't know. Leave me alone. That Death Valley driver, though. One. Where are you going, Bison? Bison a little bit confused as to where the pin was happening. Took a detour. Another close count, but Mighty Dude is on point with these pin breakups. Now a duo is going for the tag fin, but Bison ain't there yet. Just and and wondered what dude already, man. He is literally dead. He's just having spasms. Post mortem spasms. Uh, I hear Bison and uh, Mighty Dude fighting ringside though. Duo really wants to hit that tag finisher. Here comes Bison gingerly walking his way over. What do we got for Maxwell here? The God of Death. Uh, Buckle bomb. Jesus. I don't even think Wonder Dude is tall enough to reach the top turnbuckle, to be honest. I literally think he's the size of the top turnbuckle. And a second time switching places power bomb from Duo and the elbow drop from Bison. Pretty sure Mighty just going to break that up again, though. Yes, he does. Not even a one count. fuck is this? <clears throat> Sorry, I got something on my fucking mic. <clears throat> Duo Maxwell getting frustrated with the antics of Mighty Dude here. Keeps breaking up the pin attempts. Oh! Whoa, out of nowhere. One, two, three, and Bison gets the pin finally on Wonder Dude. 
after catching him quite I did not see that did that even happen shout out to Fury as Bison slays one of dude's dreams of having a successful debut he just got absolutely eaten and spit out by the Empire of Pain here tonight I had high hopes for the League of Dudes. But Bison and Duo Maxwell had something else in mind <clears throat> for tonight here on Monday Night Fusion Edition number 42. And still with our main event to come, Jacob Ziegler and Brian Novak, champion versus champion. I want to see a replay of that pop-up powerbomb. Because I literally blinked and missed what happened. Just saw the pin. Poor Wonder Dude. What have you what have you brought him into, my dude? Why did you do this? How could this happen to me? Mighty dude, the guy who will never fucking uh, let you get pinned though, except for that last time. Let's get the replay here. So we got an Irish whip from Bison. And then he countered and what, just probably ran at him. And Bison shut that shit down with that pop-up powerbomb. As Duo Maxwell tried to crack open Mighty Dude's coconut. The announce table. Duo Maxwell has learned how to use tools. Duo Maxwell has evolved. The Empire of Pain. With a successful win here tonight. Vintage Bison burying that young talent. Can they keep this up though? Get themselves a tag team title match. Only time going to tell. <clears throat> and there we go, folks, to cap off a wicked night of action. Champion versus champion. Jacob Ziegler takes on a Brian Novak, Anarchy Champion versus Undisputed Champion. You see uh, Quinn Bell going to be joining Jacob Ziegler, of course, but I'm actually getting word that Justin Sane is apparently saying that he'll be joining us ringside here tonight. I like to say he'll be in the corner of Brian Novak, but spectating his ancient foe. The two haven't set foot inside the same ring in almost four years since they were both Rookies down on NXT. Now this Sunday at Purgatory, they fight for the grandest prize in this business, the Undisputed Championship, to see who will go on to main event the show of shows and put that championship on the line against either Ken the Wolf or Ken the Wolf and Randy Borton, depending on the outcome of their match at Purgatory. <clears throat> Justin Zane looking going to main event his second straight ascendance, though. Something that Hayden was looking to do, his third straight ascendance, but of course he didn't win the Rumble. Got those dreams shattered. He's got sushi to worry about now inside Hell in a Cell, the pay-per-view. Justin Sane on top of that, looking to set yet another record in his career. First ever four-time undisputed champion. He's already set one record as being the longest reigning world champion at six months. Brian Novak just winning the championship at Absolution, doing what virtually nobody thought he could do. Look back at the votes. Pretty sure only two people said that Novak was going to pull out the victory. I think like 10, 10 or 11 people voted for Borton. <clears throat> Proved everybody wrong, though, and a lot of people didn't think he'd be able to beat Sushi X last week on Genesis. What a match they had rivaled Randy Borton and Justin Sane's uh, bout on Fusion for match of the week, but just barely beat him. What a match that was. Novak putting the Asian sensation down, catching him with a springboard Novocaine. Justin Sane, hopefully he watched that, said, just took a note, no springboards. What did Justin Sane have springboards? Not too sure. Second annual Cyber Invitational winner. That's why he's getting this championship opportunity. Like I said earlier, a big opportunity for the Scott Jacob Zigo to prove that he belongs in the main event scene. If he can defeat the reigning undisputed champion, Zigo will talk your head off all day about he's the longest reigning Anarchy champion brought prestige back to the belt. Turning on his stable, 
Xander Slate last week on Genesis. Striking out on his own. Well, not on his own. Oh, he's going to have his bay, Quinn Bell, by his side. Instrumental in getting Quinn her win earlier tonight. See if Quinn helps him out. Pays him back. Justin Sin keeps his uh, his mitts off the smash as well. <clears throat> and here he comes. Jacob Ziegler, he's got the dank leather jacket. He's got the dank gold chain. No dank shades, but he's got that dank anarchy title, and he's got that dank Quinn Bell. Hey, I'd like a dank Quinn Bell. Where's my dank Quinn Bell? Please respond. Ziegler, tell me how to acquire one of these dank Quinn Bells. Ziegler with so much swagger behind each each step that he takes, you can just tell how full of himself he really is. Xander Slate laid down the challenge. He said, Ziegler, it's time for me to teach you a lesson. I tried to help you out, and you've turned your back on me. Now i got to beat your ass. As I've done with all my former students, Ziegler's yet to respond, yet to say anything since the attack on Xander. Oh, and there they are, the heartbeats start, and the fans know who's coming out. The new undisputed champion, the longest reigning champion in CMV history. Ten months he spent in one of his three reigns as European champion, the German. And look at that, Justin Sane coming out right behind him. I don't know if Novak knows that Sane's there. Cheeky golf clap by Justin, though, the unpredicted one, maybe being... Uh, being a little bit of a, a jokester. Looking for some goofs and gaffs. Yeah, look at this guy taking that title from you this Sunday, bitch. It's certainly going to be one match to see. You're not going to want to miss it. A stacked card already set for Purgatory. Nine huge matches announced. Just earlier tonight, we heard the anonymous GM say Nick Blake and Billy Weaver will be battling it out in a Falls Count Anywhere match. Two Hell in a Cell bouts. Tornado Tag Team champs to be decided. International belt will be on the line. Novak and Justin Sane toe-to-toe -to -toe as Ziegler giving the ring to the legend. There it is, Justin. Bri Look at the symbolism. Brian Novak standing over Justin Sane like a king. You're a peasant, and you're not taking this title from me. Justin Sane spectating ringside. Champion versus champion here in our main event. Referee rings the bell, and here we go. Is Brian Novak catching Ziegler right at the start with a pullback attack into a sidewalk slam. Only the strong will survive. Find out this Sunday if Brian Novak is indeed strong. Will Justin Sane make him look strong? Or will he bury him as he has many another men? Oh, we're now both feeling each other out. First time these two are facing off one on one. I would I'm gonna kill myself this clean break. Oh, Brian Novak takes the cheap shot. Telling Jacob Ziegler, hey, bring it on, man. I can play your game. I don't play this game. Ziegler retaliating with a nice hip toss. Neckbreaker favorite move there. One of my favorite moves. Top five. Just like Tim has the neck crank in his. We all have them favorite moves. Novak taking the arm of Ziegler around behind the back. Trying to pop it out of its socket here it looks like. Ziegler got to find a way out of this one man. Brian Novak lets him go showing pity. Ziegler quick to react. 
Smacks away, punch the face. Russian leg sweep, though, by Brian. Double knee brace, Brian. That's my nickname for him. Strong with those knees, Brian. That bow tie backbreaker digs the knee, you see right there, into the kidneys. And grabs your arm and legs, but you should not bend. Saints loving it. Main event of Ascendance has Justin Saints' name written all over it. Second straight show of shows. Be going in to defend against either Kendall Wolf one on one or perhaps Kendall Wolf and Randy Borton. Novak will show us another huge upset. Put down his former foe. So many different outcomes. Can't wait for Purgatory this Sunday. Our last stop. Only seven weeks to go until Ascendance, ladies and gentlemen. Just relentlessly uh, fucking curb stomping that goddamn knee of Ziegler's. <laughs> Pretty rude. What did that knee ever do to you? Into the corner goes Jacob now. As Novak going to put him in the tree of woe position. Hanging upside. Quinn's not even looking. She doesn't want to look at it. Oh, she turns back. The horror. Cringing at the sight of the Anarchy champion being choked out. First pinfall attempt of the match, I think, in bound here. That lateral press. One. Just a one count, though, for the undisputed champion. Into a powerbomb. Ziegler not even able to get back to his feet. Oh, my God. Almost decapitated him. Oh, that's off rope there. Please chill. Where's that barbed wire rope at? Make it a little bit more safe. Into the corner yet again. Going to go Ziegler. I think I might know what Novak has in store here. Ziegler ain't going to let it happen. He studied the tapes. If you're smart, you don't go into a match with Brian Novak for the first time ever without studying him. That's just what Justin Sane is doing here. Justin Sane's a smart man. He knows what it takes to be at the top of the mountain. He doesn't, he doesn't underestimate his opponents, his foes. He sizes them up. Calculates what he's going to have to do to put them down for the three count. Justin Sane, a former NXT champion. A three-time world champion, a former United States champion. This man made his debut at the second annual Ascendance. Not many superstars, I don't think any superstar besides him can say that. That they've made their debut on the grandest stage of them all. Oh, inverted Frankensteiner. Ziegler trying to mount a comeback late in the match here. It's been all Novak thus far. And there's that cocky side of Ziegler shining through. Goes for a stomp, psychs him out, though. Brushes him across the face. What an asshole this guy is. I do not like Ziegler. I'm not a fan. I'm not a member of his fan club. I don't write fan fiction about him. Him and Quinn Bell late at night. Yes, I do. And Novak teasing us. Thought he might have been going for that uh, that Tower of London. Instead, we get that big-time superplex. Not going to go for a pin, though. Not content. Got to be careful for Novak. Doesn't underestimate Ziegler here. He's the longest-reigning Anarchy champion for a reason. 79 days as of tonight. Oh, oh, I thought he was going for a Tiger suplex. That would have been better. Right into the corner. So we get a double-knee gut buster. Chicken wing gut buster, I should say. All in the Anarchy Champion. Might be going for that buckle bomb of his. Novak knows it. This has been a very technically sound match. As Novak might win this match off the uh, move that Quinn won of hers earlier tonight with. No, I'm not, not going to go for the pin. Stiff kick to the lower spine, though. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Ziegler shuts that shit down. <laughs> Novak was like, I'm tired of this guy. Going for a Novocaine. Oh my god, the reflexes of Ziegler though, just grabbed it midair and said, nah, not right now. I'm not feeling it. Do you really want to feel it, Ziegler? You really want to feel it? How about this surfboard stretch? Quinn Bell, she's not liking it. Hellacious match she had just a, not even an hour ago against Jay Devine. Surprised she's out here supporting her man, though. 
jumping neckbreaker. Ziegler collapsing a couple of, a couple of seconds after hitting the move. Ziegler's not hydrated enough, man. Got to stay hydrated. Got to work on that cardio. Ziegler on the mind of many. This is the 2018 Newcomer of the Year, ladies and gentlemen, Jacob Ziegler. Many men see him as being a future main eventer, a man who could maybe main event the fifth annual Ascendance. But tonight, he's just a rookie, albeit the longest reigning Anarchy Champion rookie, but still hasn't even been here that long. Let's, I mean, let's realize that. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jacob Ziegler going for that pedigree of his. Oh, and he hits it but collapses. The gas tank is on E. Just throw your arm over Ziegler. What a big win this would be for your career. Oh, way too late. Who knows, though? Who's... Is that Justin Sane? Justin Sane grabbing the referee's attention in support of Brian Novak here. What is this malarkey? Jacob Ziegler, I can be happy about that. And Quinn Bell does nothing to stop it. Double axe handle off the top by Novak. I don't think Ziegler would have gotten the pin there anyway, but still. And as I was saying before, that all happened. You got to remember, Ziegler's only been here for, I, I, I'm going to say maybe six months. I mean, that's not a long time. It's not a short amount of time, but it's not long at all. So he just rakes his elbow across the goggles of Novak here. He is going in on the Undisputed Champion. He, know, he, he knew he had the win right there in Justin Sane cost him. Ledge off the back of the head. Careful, Ziegler. Justin Sane's mean mugging you. When Sane mean mugs you, you will be buried. Oh, dirty heel tactics inbound. I can sense it. Feet on the rope. Ref doesn't see it. One, two. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Novak lucky. And the fans just popping. As Novak goes for a hellacious Irish whip. What an Irish whip. Oh, my God. And you can tell Novak is so tired right now. Trying to go for his sig. Pretty sure he's going to hit on the superplex, though. No, nope, Ziggler ain't going to let anything happen. Takes his own risk. Missile drop kick. A move we rarely see here in CMB. I'm liking it. Oh, well, Ziegler, I think he's trying to go for his sig. Game wouldn't let him, though. Probably doesn't have enough stamina. Gonna go for another pin. Nonetheless, has that soccer ball kick right to the gut. Not gonna put down Novak with a move like that, though. Come on, Ziegler. Making Brian exert his energy. It's a good strategy. Another pedigree is certainly an even better strategy, though, here for Jacob. Yeah! Oh! Whoa, mama! That super kick, though. Pretty sure a fan in the fifth row just caught Brian Novak's tooth. And still not enough to get the three count for the Anarchy Champion. He just took a while to get to the pin there. A while. He took a while to get to the pin here. Oh, another Novocaine attempted. Ziegler escapes by the skin of his tooth. Oh, Novak in big time trouble. We haven't seen this from a very... And a very long while from Ziegler. Knee right to the head. Busts the undisputed champion. Wide open. What are you doing, Ziegler? Pin him. You fucking goober. One. Two. Oh, Jacob, you big dunce. Wanted to try to be flashy. He was cocky. He got ahead of himself. Said, hey, I'm going to plant a moonsault on him before I pin him. And it came back to bite him. As now Novak has another chance to come back here. Justin saying very well might have met his match, ladies and gentlemen. Resiliency is, is such a big part of both of these men's uh, arsenal. Such heart. The will to continue on. They will not die. Was he the in, immovable object of the unstoppable force? That's what's going down this Sunday. Right back to the surfboard stretch. Novak, he is weary, and he's taunting. Going for his comeback, I think. Not smart. Not smart, Brian, or maybe it is. Oh, yes, there it is. Overhand punch. 
And a second time looking for blood. Irish whip. Nice counter by Ziegler though. Can he continue it? No. Eats the knee of Brian. From the undisputed champion riding high. Counter by Jacob though. He wants nothing to do with it. Targeting that open wound with a nice tornado DDT. Lateral press should hook them legs. Come on, Jacob. You should know better. Always hook the legs. How many times do I have to say it? There's Ziegler. Just toying with Brian now. Late into the match, Ziegler should be looking for another finisher. Not toy. Look at that. Just showing no respect is Jacob Ziegler. Shows no respect and wants everyone to worship him. Saying he's brought the Anarchy title up from the, the dust and the dirt. Can barely lift up Novak. Oh my god, they almost tossed him out of the ring. Jesus. Letting the blood drain from that open gash. Again, going to try for a pin. Ziegler is desperate, and you can tell. Frustration's getting to him. He wants this win. He knows what he'll do for his career. But Novak just ain't having it tonight. I don't know what Ziegler's doing. A little bit of a jig here. Send a dance club. This is the main event of Monday Night Fusion. The first ever main event for Ziegler, might I add. Oh, and the knee just dug into the chest. That knee brace. Oh, and he's cocking it up. Winds it nice and good. Novocaine. Bam. Lights out. Game over. For the Scott here. Right in front of Quinn Bell. No respect shown by Novak. Lateral press. And there's the three. What a main event to Monday Night Fusion. I certainly can't complain. That was an awesome one. Jacob Ziegler did indeed prove he can hang with the best of them. Is he main event material just yet, though? I'm not too sure. That's up to you. What do you think? Leave your comment in the section below. A valiant effort showed by Ziegler. Dirty heel tactics aplenty, but toying with his opponent, getting ahead of himself, too cocky for his own good, gets you one of these. Novocaine, bow, and the lights are out. Couldn't bow with her hands on her heart. As she watches the bay go down for the uno, dos, a tres. And that gash beginning to bleed again. Gonna have to get that stitched up before this Sunday. Oh, Novak getting... Getting a little bit, uh... A little bit, uh, fucking frustrated with the ref here. About to look out for a Novocaine. Justin Sam once more in the background. You saw him with a cheeky golf clap this Sunday. Undisputed championship on the line. Who's going to the main event of Ascendance? Brian Novak, Justin Sane. Toe to toe. We'll also see Randy Borton, the Moo Moo Man, collide with the 2018 Royal Rumble winner Kendall Wolf. If Borton can defeat Kendall, he will be added to the main event, the show of shows. And as always, we still got that live event coming our way. It'd be nice to get someone in here to talk to, considering with that whole stream without seeing anyone talk. <sighs> they better fix this shit, though, for the next stream, so I'm not having it. I'm not a happy camper. Get your shit together, Twitch, for once. Twitch. Jesus, fucking Twitch, Twitch, this dick nigga, bitch. So we got a news alert here. It's probably about a rivalry. Yeah, Nick Blake's rampage continues. Who will be attacked next this Sunday? Also, Nick Blake, Billy Weaver, falls count anywhere. Let's see if we can get anyone in the studio tonight for this live event.
Hello? Hello. We got good old Timmy boy in here. The Timster. This fucking chat thing, eh? Really grinds my yeah. gears. Oh, there's some stuff you should be happy you missed. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> Is anyone saying they want to join commentary? I can't know. I'll, I'll ask. Takers. Everybody hates me, I understand. I see how it is. I just need Tim on my lap. I don't care about anyone else. Uh, bounce me, don't forget to bounce me. Thank you. Alright then, let's do this. Alright, lab event. Eh! God damn it. Eh! Eh! Alright, what do we got here? Furious Frank versus Headhunter. That'll be a match to see. Rex Carter versus Mastafujin. And Briggs oh. Valentine and Glamour. Those are some matches there. Yeah. Those are some matches. Alright, I think our first match, we'll see Rex Carter in action. Maybe Rex take on Big Razor. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Uh, actually... I think we'll put Big Rex against Christopher and I will do that one. No, you know what? I changed my mind. It'll be a big razor. All these demands. Ba -na 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 -na. The Gears of War theme stuck in my head. Why? Because I just beat the campaign for the second one. Oh, dude. Shout out to Gears of War. CMV brought to you by. Gears of War. Pay me money. No, it's brought to you by Dark Souls 4. We're in 2018. It's actually... It. Actually, wait a minute. It's brought to you by Outbit, Out, Out, Outback Steakhouse. I forgot the town though, Rifted. Outback Steakhouse in somewhere in North Carolina, I think. Maybe South Carolina. Somewhere there, though. So, yeah. I mean, you come on commentary now, Victor. Come on, Victorum, get up here, man. Big get in Vic. this beautiful booth, soundproof. The CMB.com exclusive. Too. We'll have Casey Wilson in action again. She took on my crew. Again? I don't know, like, oh, did yeah. she change the face? Did she put on more makeup? Please tell me. Wow, it's a fucking cis white male. Sexist pig. <laughs> Hardline's teasing us. He, hard he says he's too scared to join. I have anxiety, he says. <laughs> hard loin. He says, Dashing's doom. I assume that's the accent he used. Dude, you're doom. Just a fuck all this fucking wire. Victorum demands it, well not demands, but he says he needs an invite to hop in there. Get in this shit. 
I mean, Tim, you get his gamer tag and invite him. What am I, your fucking slave? Yes. I only work for the company. I don't work for you, bitch. Tim? <laughs> oh, I, hold on. What is... Hang on, guys. I'm fidgeting with the fucking mic wire right now. Mm. Get one of the stand-up mics, man. I don't have those for Xbox, Tim. <laughs> no, they don't. Tim, you have to hear it. Though. You have the headphones on. Yeah, I'm changing this first match. It's going to be Rex Carter and actually not against Razor. Sorry, Borton, if you're in the chat. It will be Razor and change my mind again. I'm very indecisive. <sighs> Going through some things, Tim. You know? Tim, it's almost 90 degrees here. <laughs> yeah, I'm changing. Putting the AC back. <sighs> And in the main event of said live event, let's have <clears throat> tag team action, maybe, I guess. Since Hellish was so nice to demand that the Fallen be in action, I guess I have no choice but to. Oh, Tim just died. Ripping pieces. Looks like it's just me for the live event, ladies and gentlemen. I'll always be here for you. Always. Sorry, I think I want to get fucking. CMV.com exclusive here tonight, lads and gents. Since it's a Thursday, we don't have our usual posse here in the studio for the CMV.com exclusive. It's just good old the dashing, the DJ of the year right here for y'all. Tim was bouncing on my knee, but his mom said they had to go to the grocery store and she needed help. You know, Ziegler still recuperating from that loss to Brian Novak. Sushi X and Hayden are exchanging uh, bitter words on Twitter, I'm sure. Everybody's busy tonight. So we are kicking off this live event here with Rex Carter. The Hillbilly, a new Carter. Going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Razor Windu having his first singles match here. One of the most hyped uh, CMV debuts of, of all time, no doubt. Razor Windu finally making his appearance in the Royal Rumble, eliminated three other men being tossed out himself. The likes of Xander Slayton there as well. But, uh, last, I was it the last, I think it was two weeks ago at a live event. Razor Windu was in action, teaming with Ryan Colt to take on Rex Carter and Dregs. Razor and Colt took the loss, and so now Razor has a chance to redeem himself in singles competition. Na, 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 na
Sorry about that. Banana, banana, banana. I gotta admit, since Rex Carter turned his back on the Minutemen, an absolution struck out on his own, saying the Minutemen are gone, but Rex Carter is forever. And setting his sights on the last remaining member of the said Minutemen, Abbott Bass, has been brutally assaulted by the Hillbilly these past couple of weeks. And Abbott Bass actually requested a match against Rex Carter, and Rex responded by saying, you ain't worth my time, boy. Certainly a new attitude for Carter that not many people are fans of. I can assure you that Carter does not care. Here he comes. The fans here at this live event are on their feet. Big Razor Windu making his singles debut. This man is big. He is mean. He's got a nice looking goatee and about a million piercings. And I think he stole Ziegler's dank glasses. See if this kid can make his way off the live event shoes with a win here tonight. How can that nose piercing be comfortable? I don't understand. It can't be comfortable. It simply can't be. What are you doing, Razor? What are you doing with your life? You think your parents will be proud? You're here on a live event with stuff all in your face, fighting the hillbilly? Okay, you're. I'm not going to talk any more trash. With that close up of Razor right there with his purple hair. As he clashes with Rex Carter here. Sorry, I was turning my fidgeting with my mic again. Eh. All right, there we go. Rex Carter jawbreaker going to send Razor Windu flying back, trying to keep him grounded. Rex Carter coming up on a year. I believe uh, two weeks after Purgatory will be a year that Rex Carter has been here in CMV. Actually, no, it was uh, Absolution was a year. I'm pretty sure it debuted like a week, maybe a week or two before Absolution. So Rex Carter actually just came up on his anniversary. I was wrong there. And all that time, he was seen as a, a joke, you know, a pushover, a tag along, especially in the Minutemen. And Carter said he was sick of it. He's ready to succeed on his own, doesn't need to wait. I mean, oh, Abbott and Slick B, God rest his soul. Tyson Newman and Alexander Bannon dragging him down. I would not want those big ass meaty thighs of Razor Windows wrapped around my throat. Either Rex Carter getting the hell out of there as fast as he can. Still to come here on this live event, Casey Wilson. Let's continue on her undefeated streak when she takes on Maya Cruz. Everybody's favorite Latina. And then in the main event, we got some tag team action as the Fallen will be taking on Jimmy Starr and Johnny Vegas. Pairing there after Jimmy Starr made his fusion debut last week with a loss to Vegas. Two team up here tonight. Maybe Vegas saw something and Jimmy, the upstart indie darling, nearly broke the internet when he debuted in the Royal Rumble at Absolution. Oh, hits a nice sidewalk slam, does Rex Carter. Oh, how about that knee right to the jaw, though? Gets that running start. First pinfall attempt of the match by Razor. One, 
two. Not even. I don't think that was a two count. Barely. Barely. Brings a couple of elbows down hard onto the forehead. Flips him over. Wants to look at that back fat. Gonna get that back V for Rex Carter's CFC career. Big wind doom is he on store here? Oh, a lawn dart. That's a dangerous move. And another pinfall attempt by Windu. Good call. That could be all she wrote. Rex ain't done just yet, though. Closer and closer. Windu creeping up on the victory rolling neck snap. Big man showing some athleticism. Ooh. What's that? I forget what that move's called. Fuck. It's like a choke slam and spine buster combo. I know it has a move, though. Shout out to David Otunga as a razor. He's sizing Rex up for here. Out of the corner. Oh, I got that, that calf kick. One, two. Yet only a two count as Razor is dumbfounded at the fact. He's not happy. Got to stay on him though, Razor. Let your emotions get the better of you. Just try to finish Rex. Nice chest bump. Oh, the chest bump going to stagger Rex. As we get a sit out uh, back power bomb maneuver thing. But only a two point nine 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 nine. Spin out power bomb. I believe it is called. By Razor there. Called the Razor's Edge. Yeah, Fortin. I don't know. The move Thunder Bomb still. Even though it's for Razor. Rex is hurting something fierce right now. Might have underestimated uh, Razor in that tag match a couple weeks ago. Didn't see a whole lot of them. Seeing all of them now, though. Man, those, those those trunks are up a little bit too tight, Carter. A little bit too high, a little bit too tight. Getting that chub and tuck. Yeah, I can't hate on a chub and tuck, but. Razor now to the top. Looking for a butterfly suplex. I'm an all windu, man. Playing, playing with his food at this point. Reverse chin lock. Big fucking goddamn Titanic arms of Razor over here. Trying to suck the air out of Rex. What? He somehow missed that. He went over the head of Razor somehow. Rex tried to go for the body block of his. Modified Falcon Arrow instead. Going to connect. When you're going to go for another signature here. And if he connects with this, he might hit the ref. Ref, watch out, please. Ref going to take the bump. A second time. No. Rex saw it coming. Ain't about taking two. What a kick. What a kick. Yeah. Now it's going to hang up. Razor. Ribs first on the top rope. Oh, punch the dick. Windu ain't done yet. He's desperate. Grabbing at straws. I <laughs> mean, tiny dick joke. GG me. Shut the fuck up, Michael Cole. Talking about fusion. You know, Thursday fusion, Thursday. I don't know what the fuck he just said. Shut the fuck up. Confirmed. Michael Cole versus Dashing DJ Area Descendants. Oh, I know I already have a match with the uh, ropes and like the stairs and the apron and shit and Chris Benoit's ghost. <gasps> Dragon <sighs> For Windu. As he looks to follow that up with a snapmare. Right back to the reverse chin lock. And Rex has got to get out of this as quickly as possible. There you go. To his feet. He's struggling though. Razor trying to keep him down. A couple elbows going to break him free though. Shake him from his chains. We got a regular old chin lock. Nothing wrong with the basics, the classics. Look at that mullet, though. That fucking mane, man. That is some mane that Rex Carter's got on him. That thing was raised in the wild. Into the corner, gonna go to the newbie. Oh, Rex maybe going for a Rex flex. Not too sure. 
If he did, it got shot down real quick. Oh, oh, damn. Oh, my God. A little bit of an oversell there, but I'll take it. Jesus. I haven't seen the uh, reversal animation for that yet. Getting all the new animations tonight. I'm happy. Good show. Good show. Jolly good show, sir. Rex now. Irish whip. Puts Razor in the corner. Going for another Rexplex, maybe. No, a lawn dart of his own. All right, tip for tat. There you go. How'd that feel? Tell me how that turnbuckle tastes, boy. Oh, shit. It's that boy. What up? No, nah, on there. Two count. Both men are tired. This match has gone on for a, a while now. Back and forth. Rex not taking it easy on the newcomer. And Razor, certainly the start. Had the match one hit a finisher even on Rex. Shades of Troy Voodoo right there with that butterfly DDT. It looks like Rex is napping. Eyes closed, arms out, everything. There's the three. And Razor Windu going to walk out with his first victory here in his CMV career. After a hellacious match to kick off our live event. Razor Windu giving a whole lot for Rex Carter to deal with in this match. Avenging that loss and tag action from last week. And his first taste of sweet, sweet victory and the elusive three count. And here is the finish after Rex Carter horribly missed the dropkick attempt. Razor took the advantage, saw the opening. Butterfly DDT shuts the lights out for the night. And Rex Carter goes, bye-bye. Razor Wilcox, a.k.a. Big Razor Windu. Transition screens, catching me off guard every single time. <clears throat> All right, up next, Casey Wilson set to go toe to toe with Maya Cruz in singles action. Looking to continue on her undefeated streak, two wins thus far in her career. Putting down uh, Danielle Ward, her debut, and then Kayla Turner last week, actually, both last week. Pull that double duty. And now returns to try to take down Cruz. Maya's been here for a while. A couple months at least. Five, maybe four or five months. She's been around. Not able to get herself seriously noticed though. To get into the championship pitcher. Even onto the main shows. She had, a, she had a fusion match a while back. But she lost. Certainly stopping this uh, short streak of Wilson's. Put an end to it before it really even begins. Be a nice start for Cruz. The two greatest faces, I think. <laughs> you know, Casey Wilson's right. It's not about the looks. It's about the athleticism. It's about the ability. It's about the sport. All right. My Cruz can come out shaking her ass though to that uh to that Spanish music.
Casey Wilson, in her own words, here to legitimize the Vixens roster and bring women's wrestling to new heights. Bring it to a day where it can main event shows and pay-per-views. Saying that the roster of today is so caught up with looks and drama, petty drama on Twitter and backstage. Says you're going to make it about the sport again. Maya Cruz with that booty though, making her way down the ramp. Looking for a nice victory. She hasn't tasted a win in a while. Yeah, JBL is jealous. Jealous of what? I'm not sure. But jealous that I still have a full bottle of Mountain Dew here. He's all out. Look at those legs. I'm sorry, Casey Wilson, but sometimes it's about looks, all right? Can't help it. You can't help it sometimes. You know I said in the past? You know, Casey Wilson's not that bad looking at me. I'd kiss her back to that, you know? Not no problem with it. Here we go. Live event continues with some Vixens action. Casey Wilson toe-to-toe -to -toe with Maya Cruz. We start with a test of strength. Maya Cruz, a little bit taller here than Wilson. Going to back her up into the corner. Get that clean break, though. No, Casey takes the cheap shots. Very uncharacteristic of her. Says she wants to show nothing but respect to the rest of the women. She has nothing like them. She's not going to talk trash, but she's going to tell it how it is. Look at this, though. All right. No, I, don't, hey. I can dig it. Bam, bam. One after the other. Some head butts with velocity behind him. Trying to... Knock that eyeliner right off my cruiser's face. Where's she taking her for? Taking her for a walk. Grabbing to hold that arm. Trying to pull it out of the socket, man. Not a great start for Cruz here. Getting dissected. Each body part already being targeted by Keeksy. Up against the ropes. Irish whip attempted by the Canadian born Vixen. And another knee connects to the chest and chin. Still to come in this live event in our main event. Going to see the Fallen take on the pairing of Jimmy Starr and Johnny Vegas. What athleticism by Wilson. Didn't see that coming from her. We've seen her time and time again in the gym practicing her boxing and the likes of that. I don't expect to see such athleticism come from her. Ooh, how about that jawbreaker, though? Making me grab my chin. Indeed, she is hooked. Rocked with the European uppercut. Maya Cruz is going to retaliate with a kick to the gut. Irish whip out onto the ring apron. Horribly misses that forearm smash. Gets it on the second attempt, though. Grabs her by the hair and her head tripped up, though. Back smacks hard off the outside in these live event mats. I don't think they're massive. That's just a cold concrete floor, to be honest. <laughs> Once up Fusion and Genesis hardly offer any support for you. You got the metal barricades, too. Maya Cruz having a field day out here. Targeting that back. Count of six. Cruz okay with taking the count out. Victory seven. Casey going to make it back in in time, though, and... Cruz a little bit overzealous, ahead of herself. Goes for a taunt, gets caught with a sling blade or a catchphrase as we know it here at CMV. We got here now, Hollywood and Vine, I think. Putting that, I don't know, my Cruz is pretty flexible. I don't know if that would really hurt her that bad. 
It's not even bending it that far above her head. Close for a lateral press. It looks like Maya's smiling into the camera as she powers out at two. Still a close one, though, for Wilson. Irish whip off the ropes. Wilson right into the arms of Maya Cruz. No, counters with a jawbreaker. Pulls her out of the corner. Oh, some strength. She got her high up into the air with that waist side slam. Wilson ain't done, though. Backbreaker, neckbreaker, combo to follow suit. Wilson just move after move after move. Back suplex, slide slam. One of my favorite moves. One of the most devastating moves you can hit on an opponent. Oh, and that was 2.99999 right there. Casey Wilson asking the ref, you sure? You sure that wasn't three? That was a close one indeed. Off the rose catapult. Oh, my God. Just literally turning to her side, popping out her, her arm. And Maya just decapitated on it. Somehow powering out, though. The fans chanting, this is awesome. It's been a pretty good match thus far. Casey Wilson in the driver's seat. Power move after power move after power move. Putting a serious hurting on Cruz. Now it's this. Bam! Some spit just flew over the ref's shoes. It's not, it's not very nice. Unless you're going to shine him afterwards. Maya might be in La La Land right now. Getting tossed and whipped around like a sack of dirty laundry. Now at top and a go for a ride. Back suplex. Landed right on her neck. Oh, Cruz, there you go. Finally, a sign of life. Immediately shut down. As we now get a sit out suplex slam from the Canadian. Wait a minute, Casey Wilson. You know for a dirty heel pin? Yes, she is. Wilson, feet on the rope. One, two, only a two count. I expect that from Wilson. Got a couple dirty heel uh, traits shining through here. Whatever you gotta do to win, I suppose. Kicks out the knee of Maya Cruz. Gotta give Cruz effort here. Not going down, going out swinging at least. Another Hollywood and Vine attempt on the leg. Referee's right there to see if there's still. Looks like she's kind of tapping. Rep doesn't call it though. She was kind of tapping a little bit. I don't know if it's just part of the animation or not. Ground and pound game on point. Now a headlock. Figure four headlock, in fact. Trying to cut off the flow of oxygen. Cruz again refusing to submit. I still think she tapped out to the highway of mine, though. Don't think you can go for it again, bud. Pin attempt, anyhow. And a close one for Wilson. As she just stalks her down to prey. Oh, and a counter. Very technical is Casey. Put the power that she has, the strength. Look at that. Just whipping her into the corner. Hands around her throat. The technical prowess on display mixed with her strength and striking is just incredible right now. Oh, we get another back suplex side slam. Maya Cruz should be done for. I don't know if she will be. One. Oh, rope break. And the ref sees it, thank God. He was. If you didn't see that, I would have said something. I mean, come on. You were right there, bud. Casey ain't happy about it. Taking a step back. What is she going for here? She sizes up Cruz. Oh, double knees. Taking Cruz down. One, two, three. And Casey Wilson remains undefeated with another victory. And there's the finish right there. Double knees taken down. Cruz gets the Canadian born Vixen her third victory.
Certainly a never say die attitude on display by Cruz tonight. But Casey Wilson with the power, the strength, the utter force. Just blowing through her. Now it is time to cap off the live event at CMB.com exclusive with some tag team action. We're going to see the Fallen take on the duo of Jimmy Starr and Johnny Vegas. The, got Crow, <clears throat> Big Crow coming off a singles win last week over Elijah Stewart. Thanks to Shenanigans ringside. His tag partner and best friend John Reed. Fallen been very vocal targeting the Unholy Alliance all week long, sending out tweets and vignettes backstage saying that fear worships a, a false Dark Lord and that they represent the real darkness and saying that their Lord wants them to destroy Bill Maverick and his allies, his little army he's got going on. So sending out the challenge... But tonight it's all about trying to get some momentum on their side and another win. As the indie darling Jimmy Starr teams up with the man that defeated him last week in his fusion debut, Johnny Vegas. Maybe Vegas saw something in Jimmy Starr. Liked the way he was going at it. Starr certainly put up one hell of a fight. It was a good match. Maybe taking him under his wing here. See a new tag team formed. Fucking Mike Wired, I swear to God. It'll be the death of me. I'll strangle myself with it one day, hang myself. This stream was so weird not talking to you guys. I miss you. <laughs> oh, poor, and I miss you. Topher. Mari. I miss you guys. I miss you. Turn that AC off, man. Getting cold as hell in here. <laughs> Crow and John the Rebel Reed in tag team action here tonight. The Fallen looking to rise up in the rankings. Again, the number one contender spot wide open currently for the World Tag Team Championship. Hashtag. Oh, it wasn't the hashtag turning one wide. Living in the past. So fast and furious looking for new challengers. Could it be the Fallen with a win here tonight? Anything's possible. Get on, Mr. GM is watching. Oh, hello. Oh, coming out together. Power and glory. All right, maybe they already got something set up with each other. I, I haven't heard anything about this. I, I was told there were new tag teams arriving on the scene, but I thought they were like new, new signings, new superstars. But it looks like Johnny Vegas is indeed taking Jimmy Starr under his wing. Going to teach him a thing or two about the big times. Power and glory. Yeah, they're making their tag debut tonight. They definitely got the dank shades on point. <clears throat> Crow of the fall and kicking things off against Jimmy Starr of Power and Glory, as they're calling themselves to see. The Referee rings the bell. Kick things off here. Jimmy Starr looking for his first victory here in his CMB career. Out uh, of the tutelage of Johnny Vegas. Johnny Vegas is named as a possible future main eventer by many the CMB uh, locker room when he first showed up. Getting many wins, like a lot of wins lately. Singles wins, see how it is in tag team action. One of those wins even came over Jimmy Starr last week. Oh, he almost 
And we'll splash that suplex a little bit. Oh, doing some squats. Haven't said squats since 2K15. We ain't got them squat animation anymore. Tag matches. Rest in peace. Gone but not forgotten. Crow off the ropes. We're going to do a spinning back elbow from Star. Taking him for a walk up against the ropes. Big man Crow, who has some uh, <clears throat> big wins of his own in singles competition for John Reese, showed up on the scene. They reformed their tag team known as the Fallen Crow. Beat the likes of Hayden and Sunshine, two CMV legends. Future Hall of Famers guaranteed. Ooh, getting out of that suplex attempt. Almost got caught with it. Counter by Star. <clears throat> oh, look at this. The show off. Doing some push ups on the down crow. And Crow's not happy about it. Fighting to get free. Tag to Vegas now. Nearly chucked into his partner, Crow. Makes the tag to John Reed. The Rebel. Gets caught with an Irish whip. Pullback attack. No. Duping us. Duping Reed. Has to take his head off with that elbow. Punch to the dick. Going to get Reed back to his feet, though. Irish whip of his own. Knocks Jimmy off the ring apron. How about that elbow, though? John Reed seems pretty proud of it. <coughs> oh, fuck, man. I think there's dust all in this AC. It's making me cough more than usual. I am allergic to dust. Hey, Dash and DGRE, fun fact. Dust isn't very pleasant anyhow. Oh, shoulder first he went into the steel post there. Now targeting the leg. Every single limb is available here for Vegas, it seems. Jimmy Starr, as I said multiple times, an indie darling. No one around the world, but he's never been in the big leagues before. CMV where the best town in the world congregates. He truly is the best of the best. Needs some guidance. Johnny Vegas certainly been here. He's done his time. Almost the start of season three, Johnny's been here. I believe he debuted a little bit before Exodus. It's nearly like eight months ago. Not eight months ago, so like six, seven, seven months ago, I'd say. Off the ropes and a nice scent, Tom, by John. John and Johnny. John, Johnny, and Jimmy. Ooh, double leg takedown. Springing to his feet. Vegas coming to life with that one. They'll try to tag in Jimmy now. Keep themselves fresh. Got the momentum going their way. Swinging in their favor thus far. Until he ate that knee. Shimmies his way over to Tag and Crow. See if the strong man can bounce them back in this match. Not been doing too well thus far. Spins him around. Looks like Jimmy's hair could impale someone. That's what that's looks sharp. There's a lot of, lot of product in that hair, I can guess. Another nice suplex reversal. Crow on point here tonight. Ooh, heard that one in the cheap sheets. The cheap sheets. This is a live event. All the seats are pretty cheap. <clears throat> but you, you know what I'm saying. You catch my drift. You're buying what I'm selling. Waste lock. Oh, that <laughs> bad animation. And a pinfall attempt. Those pants are shiny. Got some shiny pants. Ooh. Oh, man, Crow felt that one in agony. Nice combination. They're strung together, ending with an Enzu Lariat. Wants to see that blood, does Crow. Wants to see it seep out. Oh, and a bangerang now. Smash completely swung in the opposite direction. Crow coming out of nowhere with this 
come back. Almost scored his team the victory there. Star got to be careful. Johnny got to be careful. She got them broken that up. I think I know what Crow's waiting for here. Gonna try for the tag fin. Jimmy ain't gonna let that happen with the cravat suplex. He's only had two matches thus far, but I know him for the cravat suplexes. Seems to favorite that move. I don't know what Jimmy's trying to do here. It seems like he has a force field activated. There we go. Crow finally knocking him down off the top. Gonna take him for a ride, make him pay for his sins. Oh, back. Impaled on the map below. Spine shattered into a million pieces. And now we might get that tag fin from the fall in. G9 inbound. Fallen looking for the win. John Reed hooks the leg. One, two. Oh, Johnny just makes the save. I feel like I changed their fin like you asked me to, Hellish. I can never tell that you're probably whispering me, saying, why isn't it the, uh, the World Bell Code Breaker? I feel like I changed it, though. Maybe I only changed it in Hexhibition. I'm not too sure. I'll do it after this, though. G9 almost got the job done uh, nonetheless. And it sounds like Crow and, and Vegas are having a good time with each other ringside. Cameron's not catching what's going on. But there we go. Crow just trying to, oh, missed the kick though. Vegas back to his feet. And a Russian leg sweep. Almost a Vegas bomb. Looks like Star might be trying for a tag pin, but his partner's nowhere to be found. Gonna have to settle for, he's going for a heart stopper. Who does this guy think he is? Xander Slate, get out of here with this junk. Get out of here with this garbage. You ain't no Xander Slate, kid. Oh, Vegas back on the apron. We can see a tag fin. Oh, Vegas, for some reason, decided to take a stroll out to the middle there. And now we get another heart stopper. Falling back elbow. <clears throat> You're probably going to try for the tag fin again. Oh, no, tag to Vegas. Shaking it up a little bit. Now an Irish, we're going to put Johnny in the corner. John, I should say. I can say Johnny. There's a guy named Johnny in here. We're here. Suplex attempt. Off the top, too. Both men on the top. Oh, my God. And that hurt Johnny just as much as it did Reed. Shoulder claw of doom. Pressing down on the muscles of the rebel. Lateral press now. One, two, and that shoulder claw is pretty damaging. That's pretty devastating, but I'm not going to get the three count here. Tag to Jimmy Starr. Power and glory looking for the victory here. Their debut of the team. Oh, European uppercut. That's the wrong corner. They're going to make the tag fin with uh, Crow. Jesus, Xander Slate is not happy right now. I can tell you that. I'm a close personal friend of Xander's, and he's, I can tell right now he's not loving this. He's going to have a talk to the anonymous GM, have him fire the schmuck, trying to copy the greats. Oh, here we go. Jimmy Star tried to hit this multiple times already. What are they going to do with each other? I'm not too sure. Oh, super kick. And then a pedigree from Star. What a combo. Flips him over, hooks the leg. One, two, three. And that's all she wrote. As Star is able to stop Crow from breaking up the pin. And Power and Glory going to score the win. Seems like whatever Johnny Vegas is uh, whispering in the ear of Star is paying off here tonight. Nice tag fin to put the match to an end, though. Beautiful teamwork. You can see the finish right here. Tag to Johnny Vegas. Irish whip. 
right into a super kick and then turns around. Maybe I'll make the tag to Crow. Nope, there's Jimmy waiting for him with a slick pedigree. Johnny Vegas makes the pin. Jimmy right back into the ring and up to stop Crow. Bumps into him and then catches him with a Russian leg sweep. Make sure he stays down. Jimmy and Johnny. Star in Vegas. Power and glory. Will they have it all? Nice win for them here tonight. And as always, that is so loud. As always, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we saw and you want to follow me, make sure you do so. I do stream every Monday and Friday. No, today's Thursday. Leave me alone. Uh, so, yeah, as I said earlier in the stream, I'll probably do Genesis now on Sunday. Post the Purgatory card on Monday. And then maybe do the pay-per-view on a Wednesday or Thursday or something. I'm not too sure. If you want to keep up with the schedule, make sure you follow me. Um, or not follow me. You can follow me on Twitter. I don't know what my Twitter handle is, though. I never use it. But if you can find it, hey, you can follow me. I meant if you want to join the website, you can. It's communityuniverse.foramotion.com if you want to keep up to date with the schedules. If you want your call on the show, you're more than welcome to head on over there and check things out. All the past episodes are linked on my... Uh, are on my YouTube channel, which is linked on my Twitch page, I should say. And I will see you guys for the final stop before Purgatory.